Who are you? I'm Timmy from Tim Jong-un Productions. This is Far Off Films Podcast. That was a quote from uh, Im- Imperfect uh, Red. Uh, <laughs> who are you people? <laughs> I'm um, Jules from the pop star group The Wars Man. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am Luca from uh, <laughs> the TikTok household. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas <Ford>. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, and uh, we're joined today uh, by our our very first guest, uh, AJ, uh, please introduce Ooh. yourself and in- introduce yourself to the world. Um, rebranding yourself as a, as an actress. Who are you? What's your whole deal? What are you on about? Hi, my name is AJ short for like apple juice or something. I don't know. It's really early. I'm really <laughs> tired. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I talk about, you know, movies and, music on on the youtubes on the letterbox on on twitter sometimes on take wherever i feel like wherever i fucking feel like talking about stuff i i i I talk about it whether people like it or not you know i i have all the power bitch i don't know what are your thoughts on anthony fantana yeah no that's that's very commendable yeah i've always been a, a big fan of your uh your content, you know, because that's the sort of impression that I get from you. You're just like, you know what? I feel like just talking about like my top 10 favorite directors or some shit like that. Like I've always liked your just a commitment to just say, fuck it. This is what I want to talk about. So, that, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, really like my, my kind of approach and like why I, I kind of review movies the way that I do is mainly because like. I don't know. For the most part, I I find um, no no disrespect to like other film like reviewer YouTubers out there, but I I, I always kind of found them a bit boring and kind of like one note. And um, I've always loved movies and I've always loved music, so I just kind of wanted to take like a my own approach, if you know what I mean. And again, that that that's no that's no disrespect to other film reviewer YouTubers out there. I love you. It, it's just uh, it's just I, I like I like variety. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Yeah, and you stand out um, you. because of that. Because yeah, because I I feel like most people who just review stuff are just kind of preaching to the choir at that point oh yeah and you know and like kind of what we the rest of us do is that we don't really do that we kind of just do whatever we kind of do our own things and you know that makes us happy so uh um we go yeah so uh (laughs) sorry we go against the grain bullet train. Yeah, side. we're we're the equivalent of punk rock <laughs> in the movie review review sphere. <laughs> this is um, like your dad's movie reviews. <laughs> this is far yeah. off. But what kind of punk rock band are we? Are are we more so like the Clash or are we are we like Panic at the Disco? I was thinking we're more like the Ramones, but then I feel like uh, AJ and Luca are too young to understand what the fuck any of us are talking about. So, 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 oh we, so that means me and Luca are like modern baseball. Am I the only one who knows who I'm modern 16. baseball is? I understand yeah. that reference. Oh yay! <laughs> they're one. They're one of my favorite bands. Like honestly, they've been they've been getting me through the year. I love modern baseball. <laughs> mhm. Yeah. What would you say uh, is your favorite movie? And uh, what would you say is like your least favorite movie, if you have that? My favorite movie, it's always been my favorite movie. Well, since college, uh, Little Miss Sunshine is my oh, yeah, yeah. favorite movie. Yeah. Um, basically, it, it, it's like the, the definitive H.J. Ford movie. Uh, which is oh, like really? A, <laughs> it, which is like a really quirky wholesome but but also like a bit rebellious so not too sentimental mm-hmm. um you know a lot of wes anderson movies are aj ford movies a lot of noah bombach 
movies. Are oh, like, you just made Luca happy right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Greta Gerwig. Um, my least favorite movie. Oh, that's an easy one. Um, not cool. The Shane Dawson movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if that counts. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that like, like I could have literally picked anything else. Like, but like, here's the thing about bad movies. Um, a lot of movies that people just consider to be like the worst movies of all time are, are movies that I just consider to be too entertaining for, for me to personally think I know that it, exactly it, what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, like for example, that. like I remember, um, Chris Stuckman, like screaming at the camera over that, over that Kevin Spacey cat movie, nine lives. And oh, when that, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> when, oh, when, I, um, <laughs> when I saw that movie, um, when that movie came out, I, I took my high school friend, uh, shout out to live. Um, I took her to see the movie. I didn't tell her what the movie was. <laughs> and <laughs> like, I knew exactly what it was. And, um, I was a little high beforehand. <laughs> so, we, so, uh, we were watching the movie and, we were just having the time of our lives just, like, laughing at the absurdity. Like, Nine Lives is, like, my 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 kind of absurdity that I like in my movies. <laughs> have you watched no, that... the, um... Have you watched the After movies? The what? Based on the Harry Styles fan fiction? The what? After. Um, they're... They're this is a trilogy. trilogy only you and like a handful of people know, it's, Jules. It's a trilogy of um, of films which are based on actual Wattpad fan fiction about Harry Styles. And they're just, <laughs> I mean, they're just they amazing. After. Oh, I know of After. I yeah. haven't seen it. Probably never going to see it. Oh. But yeah. <laughs> you need to watch them. They're, they're amazing. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. Because like, I feel like a lot of the movies that are like so horrendously <laughs> awful... They're just hilarious. Like, I watch um, any M. Night Shyamalan film after the after Signs purely because it's just the funniest fucking thing ever. Like, Lady in the Water, The Happening, Last Airbender, <laughs> After Earth. Like, these are some of the funniest comedies I've ever seen. Like, they're hilarious. So I get exactly what you mean. Yeah, so. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh Luca or Jules, did you guys have any questions you wanted to ask uh, AJ before we uh, get the ball rolling? Um, no. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right, movie news <laughs> You're time. not that interesting, AJ. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know what? Where's the hang up button? Oh, okay. There it is. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, anyway, what crazy shit has happened uh, this time, Jules? Okay, well, most exciting news only broke. Um, about six hours ago, the community movie is finally happening. Hell Woo! yeah! Next year. Woo! Yeah. Yes. Oh, I am so that movie, movie with streets ahead. Yeah. Yep. I am. I'm so fucking pumped. I I, I, I didn't guess. read much about that article. Did they confirm like Dan Harmon was at, was coming back to like at least write the yeah. movie or something like he's that? He's writing okay, it. Yeah. Well, that okay. was. I don't know if he's directing it. I think he is. Okay. But, yeah. It's either that or they have to bring back the Russo Bros, right? Because that's how that how that started originally. Yeah, well, I'd be open for that as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it could have it could be a better movie than the shit that they've pumping out recently. Like we talked about the Gray Man, which was a boring piece of shit. So <laughs> <laughs> this could be like a they change shot up for me the. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, I completely um... forgot the Russos were involved. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they got Are they gonna Are they gonna have uh, Allison Brie pick up Mjolnir now? <laughs> you <laughs> oh joke, but that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> remember uh, that so one episode? Seemed... Remember oh, that one sorry. episode in like the last season where they made the dean do the um the Captain America elevator fight scene? No, I, that was hilarious. I thought that was yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Awesome. And they put like uh, community actors in all their movies because um because Abed was in um winter soldier i think right and yep, the uh, dean was in civil war and yeah dean pelton was in civil war and then um and then shirley was in end game right and uh chang as well yeah 
Oh yeah, Chang was also in Endgame, yeah. And was it were there any Infinity War actors in sorry, were there any community actors in Infinity War? Because the Russo's also directed that. There might be, but I'm might be blanking. Okay. Yeah. Alright, we go. Mm-hmm. So my my other thing I've got is um about Bruce Willis. Um I, I saw he, this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has become the first celebrity to sell his rights to, to deep fake him. <laughs> what? So What? Yeah, you, know, you guys remember when um Bruce Willis got he got a um he retired from acting because he had that illness. Um, yeah, like something to do with like he can't properly communicate. He or can't. Something yeah, like he that. can't. He can't really understand what's going on. Yeah, and so now he's he sit he sold his the rights <laughs> to his face so people can deep fake him into oh. movies. So that Jesus. that stream of B movie Bruce Willis things is not oh, going away. Fun. It seems. That's the creepiest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. yeah. The headline says the actor calls the technology a great opportunity to go back in time. But did oh, he really off. say that, but, though? No, he, he didn't say he that said the said same that. way he said that, like, the John McClane prequel or fucking whatever was like, oh my god, this is like the Die Hard movie that we need. Like, no, this is just, like, bullshit, like, coming out the of cool his mouth so that he, he can get it. money. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um... I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind I, of, sorry, go on. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying that this is really scummy, because, like, didn't they try to do the same thing where it's like, let's uh, deep fake uh, James Dean because he's the only actor that, like, we can get for this movie or whatever. Like, that's just, like, a scummy thing to do. Like, I don't know, like, if you give your consent to it, I guess that's, like, less morally reprehensible, but, like, just kind of think about, like, the art you're making or whatever. It's like, you know, like... I don't know, like, sure, like, we can finally get, like, Looper 2 or something, or Moonrise Kingdom 2 if you really give a shit, but it's like, I don't know, wouldn't you rather have the actual actor there instead of, like, someone pretending to be Bruce Willis? Like, I don't know, I just think it's all scummy, so. It's just kind of creepy to me, if I'm being honest. Yeah, Yeah. it's creepy too, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, just, can we just bring back someone from the dead now? Like, can, can can we... Yeah, I, I know, the, I know, um... it's just a movie, but like, has technology like gone so far that we can now bring back dead actors? You know that well, that's just like Di- that's just like existential crisis for me right there. <laughs> but well, here's the thing: Disney does it all the time, like on their Star Wars shit. Like, yeah, I was about to bring rather that than up. bring back Mark Hamill, they like repurposed his voice and like his face. To just they essentially create a CG him. clone. Yeah, and, like, didn't they do the same thing with, like, Darth Vader's voice in, like, Obi-Wan or something? Like, Disney does this shit all the time. So they did it's it like... with uh, Tarkin. Oh, yeah, they did that, too. That was just they the did that with Leia. Thing, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was awful. Uh, I hate Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, I used to like Star Wars. That one? <laughs> hmm? Luca? No, we were just asking uh, if you had anything to say um, about this, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's weird. It's it's like, I guess, like, it's, I, I just, I, I wish I knew the, the, the context, like, like, and how it's going to happen, because, like, is it, is it a thing where, like, people are asking Bruce Willis to still be in movies, or... Is it a thing where he's just come out to the public and said, like, hey, you can use my face now if you pay me? Either way, it's just weird in general. Like, it's fucking weird. Um, yeah. But, yeah. And what happens if he's dead? Like, can he, can yeah, he, can he still just... use his, his face to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, Bruce Willis is dead, but you'll see him in Die Hard, like, 775 or some yeah, shit Yeah, I don't like know. That. It's just like, weird. I don't really have anything you know? to say. Yeah. That point just cool. They did that. Plane. He should be killed off already, because at at a certain point when he's just, like, going to Russia and, like, fighting off ways after, like, Putin's army or some shit, like, I don't know, the sense of believability is just kind of gone for me at that point. I mean, it was gone a while ago. Gone in the second movie. (laughs) I've never seen the second movie. I've only seen the first parts of three and then, like, parts of five. That's it. I've only seen number one, like a true, like a true fan. Speaking of... Yeah, true. Sorry, go on. No, I, I was just going to make a joke. You you can say your thing, yeah. Oh, oh no, I was going to say, like, uh, kind of going off topic, 
of it. Uh, speaking of more movie news. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to take the spotlight from you. <laughs> no, go, please nah, nah, tell nah, us. Some, okay. Yeah, share us what you want to share. Uh, relevant because I just saw this movie last night in a the theater, and I'll tell you about my experience in a bit. But uh, okay. Ro- Robert the Eggman Eggers. Is finally getting his oh, Nosferatu movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this. Yeah. He skipped out on Harry <laughs> Styles with, with uh, Bill, with Billy, Billy, Billy Zane Skarsgård. Yeah, Billy Zapka Skarsgård. Yeah, the Grim Adventures of Billy Skarsgård. Um, <laughs> Grim Adventures <laughs> of Billy and Mandy Skarsgård. Yeah, um, and uh, Johnny Depp's daughter. Uh, yeah. and, nice. and, uh, I kind of wanted an excuse to talk about my experience watching the, uh, 1922 silent film Nosferatu, oh, yeah. which, which is, which is honestly, ahead, yeah. uh, one of my favorite movies. Uh, that experience sucks. Okay. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> um, first off, uh, people were laughing uncontrollably for some reason. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know why. Maybe, like, either the theater just, like, released a bunch of nitrous into the audience, or, or everyone was just high. I don't know. Um, they thought they were at the screening for the room it, or something. And another, uh, the movie starts really late for some reason, because they decided to show trailers for movies that already exist. What? Like, 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 like they showed the trailer <laughs> for like Jim Jarmusch's like, like only Chaplin lovers film. left alive. Oh, oh my god! god. Was uh, it like a vampire theme trailer like showdowns? Like here are all the vampire theme movies. Basically, dude. Basically, like, <laughs> Transylvania. And, 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 and I was like, <laughs> I'm I was like Jesus! Like get get to the fucking movie! Like, like I don't want like, like I can just watch I can watch Only Lovers Left Alive at home. Like I want to watch Nah. Nosferatu. Let's just show trailers of Twilight instead. <laughs> and um, and then like after that, like a fucking guy comes out and, and goes like, "Okay, you guys, you guys ready to watch Nosferatu? Oh, by the way, a uh, SpongeBob joke." Uh, and he, oh start, he starts referencing like the SpongeBob like Nosferatu joke, and goes like, "Yeah, this is this movie's amazing. It, it came out in 1922. It had a really I crazy production." Like, hate that so I, I'm, much. I'm just like, dude, I understand that you're a nonprofit indie theater. You want people to come, but like, just you want to you want to know how you can have people come? Just start the fucking movie, and and then like not Nosferatu 1922 is is told in like acts. Right? Yeah. After each act, like, like, it'll say, like, end of act one, act two. After each act, people would applaud. Like, it's a fucking Marvel movie. And, of course, when, like, Nos- like uh, Orlok dies at the end, people cheer because he's the villain. And <laughs> and I, I, I've, I've seen silent movies, like, in theaters before. I, I don't think, like, I've had a more annoying experience than that. Like, honest. I I don't. Yeah, I was gonna say I I've never had an experience like that because the only time I've seen silent films was just for like film class at my at my at my old college, and so like the people who show up are just a bunch of like college students who are like just as interested. So I've never heard of anything like this. Like like a, a an audience being rudest. Like that's that's disgusting. That's like that's like they're pieces of shit for doing that. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, like Nosferatu is like part of film history. Like, like th- this is like one hundred year old footage you're looking at. I I expect like a little bit of respect. Like like I understand the audience is into it, but but like when I saw like um, Buster Keaton's the the general in that same theater, it was a great experience. They they had like an yeah. or they had an organist like in the theater. The movie was shot in like the original thirty five millimeter, so it looked fantastic sure, and and yeah. it was it, it was just like it, and also the audience is really into that too but it, it's buster keaton like like of course people are gonna laugh it's buster keaton and, yeah. and 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 that that experience was like one of the best movie going experience but like i guess don't see a silent 
horror movie in theaters. Anyway, what what what's up with uh, Mr. Robert the Eggman Eggers? Bacon and Eggers, yeah. Bacon and Eggers. <laughs> um, I I mean I'm excited because I've liked all of his movies so far. Um, I watch anything Robert Eggers. I was a little disappointed with Northman. I didn't hate it, but 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 I, but I didn't like. Love I really it. enjoyed it. I was. I, I, I don't know. It. Yeah, I was kind of. I I. Luca and I have actually made a review on this together on my channel. Um, where yeah, you know I. I, I, I think, like, by viewing it as this sort of, like, kind of subversive Lion King-esque story with the violent Vikings, like, it was just, like, sort of almost like an ethereal experience. Because there's a lot of, like, weird shit in the movie that's, like, common in, in the rest of his filmography that I just really appreciated. So, yeah, if we can just get, like, more of that in in this, that would be great. Or just some more something, like, on the lines of, like, The Witch or uh, The Lighthouse, you know? Because um, cause I enjoyed The Witch, and I think The Lighthouse is, like, one of the best movies of, like the 21st century so if you can get like more shit or like ever. that that'd be great yeah or ever yeah so i would prefer it to be more like the lighthouse honestly to capture yeah, like too. like the feeling of the old film because mm -hmm. the lighthouse is almost filmed like it's an old film because like the four by three aspect ratio the shooting in black and white like it feels like it was made in like you know olden times i guess if you want to call it a guy so. a guy i know actually thinks it is it, it is from olden times Oh really? That's yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I, I just said as a joke to him, like, yeah, it's from 1917. He was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Bruh. I was like, what? <laughs> Did he not recognize like Robert Pattinson at least? Like... He's not the sharpest tool in okay. the shed. I was gonna say, did he not recognize like Twilight yeah. guy and uh, I'm something of a scientist myself guy in the movie? Or... <laughs> yeah. Why, why couldn't Willem He's... Dafoe play Orlock instead of... That's what I'm saying. Like, have him play... Pla get Willem Dafoe to play the vampire. I think yeah. a good choice. He already, he already did in that... In the movie, um... I think it's called Shadow of a Vampire. He played the Nosferatu. Yeah, he played a great... Great... He played a great vampire in this uh, indie film. I believe it's called uh, Spider-Man, I think it's called. Oh, it's true. You know? Yeah, so... Like some small he was in this, indie film. He was in this of. really other, really bad, stupid movie called um, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. <laughs> it's not a vampire. Oh yeah, either. terrible movie. Uh, get 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 off my <laughs> yeah. get off of my Discord. <laughs> no, we're just fucking with you. Yes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted to get a reaction from Luca. Yeah, um, yeah, I I don't know, like getting the it clown guy. That's that's yeah, not a bad that's idea. A great idea. Um, the it clown yeah, guy collecting the scars. I know. I do like that. Infinity stones. Yeah. As far as all the the Skarsgård brothers, I guess he's the more talented one. That's um, more than one. I would say so, honestly. Yeah. Because like Alexander Skarsgård, like what good movies he's been in besides The Northman, like that one Lars von Trier film, and like that's about it. <laughs> he was Tarzan. <laughs> remember? Oh God, I keep forgetting that happened. Every time you remind me, I was like, "Oh shit, yeah, they did make a Tarzan movie." <laughs> he, he threw yeah. Christoph Waltz to the crocodiles. Oh yeah, 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 that happened. Yeah, that was man. Twenty sixteen <laughs> was such a time. <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so, yeah, yeah. I don't have much else to say about this other than. I mean, it's a Robert Eggers, and it's another Bacon and Eggers movie. I'm probably going to go see yep. it, so. I will see it. Uh, depending on what happens, I'll probably love it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so. I, got one, I got one final thing for you. Okay, quick, and let's get into movies yeah. now. So. Speaking of vampires. Which is, um, do you guys remember all the way back in um, 2019 at Comic-Con, at the big Marvel panel, when Kevin Feige said they're rebooting Blade and then brought Mahashala Ali out? Uh-huh. No. Yeah, that's that's kind of turned into a train wreck. This is a new report that um, the script is only ninety pages long. <laughs> Mahershala Ali is very frustrated. It's and features they lost their director, two... right? <laughs> yeah, they lost the director on the same day this report came out, and it features two lackluster action sequences. And wow, Kevin dude. Feige is said to be spread too thin. And just hmm, today, I wonder like, on the why. Fly, just today, I like on the why fly, I think they hired. Too thin. Just today, like on the fly, they hired one of the one of the TV show writers to come in, do rewrite the script. Oh gag! Yeah, are they gonna get one of the writers of um, 
She-Hulk or whatever. I don't know. I've never seen the show, but I've been told it's, I'm not supposed to like it or something. So, um, <laughs> I think it was the guy from Moon Knight or something. Yeah. I don't from know. Moonlight? Moon uh, Knight. Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, though, getting buried? Uh, no, he's got that Lion King Godfather prequel or whatever that he's working on, so he's probably busy. We don't um, like him anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. It's another bullshit Marvel production that's bullshit. Like, I don't know what you want me to say. So. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. pretty much doomed. Like, I honestly do not see any universe where that movie ends up being good. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, just get Wesley Snipes to direct the movie. I don't give a shit. That'd like, actually be pretty dope. We can't trust him. <laughs> have with the, the movie budget. be about, like, a we vampire, like, doing, money. like, tax evasion or some shit. <laughs> I'd pay money to see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, speaking of dead things, um, we saw bodies, bodies, bodies. <laughs> Yeah, I I know I transitioned that perfectly. Uh, what did you all think of uh, uh, the 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 Gen Z Zoomer movie? Tim already knows what I think. Yeah, I think but we should have our podcast. <laughs> we just shouldn't have it because we all know. <laughs> yeah, uh, we all know what Timmy's saying. <laughs> um, fun, awesome little movie. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I thought it was decent. Uh, I didn't think it was, like, as amazing as everyone else was saying it is. I didn't even think it was that good, if I was being honest. Um, oh, but I also true. recognize it's just purely not my thing. Uh, so I, hmm. you guys can just, like, gush about it if you want. I have, like, my issues. And um, I, there were a couple things I liked, actually. I liked the first 40 minutes. I think the first 40 minutes was really great. Um, and then it just kind of descended into bullshit um because because here's the thing for me it's like the movie like i understand the film is like kind of this like satire it's like poking fun at like gen zers and like zoomers and stuff like that and like how vain and like kind of assholey these kinds of people are but at the same time the movie expects me to care like expects me to give a shit about like their stories their individual like obstacles and and personalities and i just thought like the movie was just clashing at that sense i was like this is super confusing it's like it it expects me to care but it also expects me to like laugh at them and like laugh at their expense and like you know be like haha they said like lol reddit humor things it's like i don't know what you want me to feel it was just like incredibly like disjointing for me it was just i don't know it was just not my thing at all so yeah i i honestly i honestly don't think the movie expects you to care all that yeah, much. I was gonna being say with you. It's mostly I don't know. Yeah. I, it, because like they, 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 they kind of like you say thing. thing, yeah. They, they kind of set up that they're not really that great of people, and their narcissism is what killed them all in the end. Like that that that's the whole point in the movie. You're you're not really yeah. supposed to like empathize or really care with them. They're, they're, they're just supposed to be like this embodiment of what this movie is making fun of. I don't know, because like there are certain scenes where it's like there are just big dramatic moments like a scene that I was very conflicted on was like the whole like them like turning against each other. It's like you did you you hate watch my podcast or whatever, that sort of thing. Like I like what that scene was going for technically. And I liked all the performances in that scene as well. Like that scene was great, but it's just that I don't I don't know. I was I was just not feeling the emotions that they wanted to feel. I was like, I mean, yeah, like I laughed. I was like, haha, that's like that's dumb, that's stupid, but I don't know. Like I didn't get any other emotional reaction from that, so I don't know. But I'll let you guys gush about about it. I mean, um, I think that scene again was supposed to be humorous. It was like it was. It was like definitely <laughs> like the poking fun at the happening. fact that like 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 it. It's weird because it's it's equally poking fun at Gen Z, and it's also really honest and faithful to Gen Z at the same time. Like exactly, it's 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 a great blend and and. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I thought that scene was entirely humorous, like how they constantly like 
like, were just going at each other, like, trying to defend themselves, like a fucking Twitter argument, like, nothing's really going anywhere, but, you know, they're just pulling out every little last thing in their pocket that they can try to say to, like, uh, perceive themselves as better as the other person. And that whole scene in general, like... Yeah, like, that whole scene, like... (laughs) Like the upper middle class line, like that's the line that everyone fucking is quoting. Yes. No, it is awesome. That is like the best, one of the best lines (laughs) in the movie. That is a pristine line, and and yeah, I think that that the film really does a good job at like really encapsulating um, like how Gen Z speaks, even if it is noticeable. Um, but it's, it's honest, even if it is noticeable, like, that's how people fucking talk, like, like, I don't know, I, I guess, call me an old boomer, but it's just that, I don't know, when I hear people (laughs) say explicitly, like, things like, you know, triggered, or, like, all this other shit, I don't know, I just start cringing, and I'm just, like, there, there's, there's a good movie here, I, I see that, it's just, incredibly not for me because it's like just so overt and so in your face like i would prefer something a bit more subtle um but i don't think you can be subtle without gen z talks that's exactly how they talk like it, I don't know. I, yeah. as someone who I works like in the school gen z, i can i can confirm that that is exactly how gen z talks okay yeah i honestly think it could have been more it could have been more in your face than what it was i think they like put they conveyed it perfectly like they could have used the word toxic and gaslight and everything in every I swear second they sentence use those words i swear they use no those no words I was, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, no, did, let me did. finish my yeah. sentence please they do, they do use those words but they they don't use them like they use them like once each word in the movie they don't use them in like every second sentence i think if they wanted to really shove it in your face they would like pull out as many words from the Gen Z dictionary as they can. And they do Mm -hmm. use a lot of those words, but I think they use them sparingly and in sequences where you do notice them, but it's really funny when they do use them. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. It feels actually natural, not forced. Exactly. Like, like, yeah. Like, um, I saw this movie with one of my friends and like right after, right after the movie, we were talking about it and I was saying like my favorite part about this whole movie is that like it's not even just honest to how gen z talks like to me and and of course i've never been through something like this but (laughs) um this is exactly how a whodunit would play out in real life like like, it 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 kind of like hits the nail on the head like i i Everybody yeah. would just go against each other. Everyone would just yeah. jump to conclusions. It's like, like Among Us. Exactly <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah, it's like the thing without an alien. Yeah. <laughs> just like the way that everyone banters with each other and eventually goes against each other, I, I just thought was so brilliantly done and, and so entertaining to watch and even at points tense to watch. But how their banter, like, escalates and intensifies, I-, I thought was so believable. Despite it being, like, clearly a satire. Which is why, like, when the ending, w- when the ending reveal hits, are we doing spoilers, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're yeah. spoiling. Yeah, we're, spoiler we're spoiling. alert, yeah. So, so, when, so when we find out that, like, it was Pete Davidson... Who like killed himself? I love the ending. I love. I that it's so so good. Oh, the ending is so brilliant. Oh my god! No, it's really awesome. So like like when that when we find that out, like like it it all just kind of comes full circle. You kind of find out that like it was actually like their narcissism and 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 their like in a in like Gen Z's like inability to like actually listen to each other that's what killed them it, it, it's such a great reveal and I, i'll 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 hit the uh i'll hit the hot take uh bodies 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 is in my top three of the year i don't care what anyone says i love no, it. that's not a hot take at all if you that's like it like <laughs> you like it yeah so mm-hmm. it also just has that halloween requirement for me like Next year, Halloween, I'm throwing on bodies, bodies, bodies with a bunch of my friends just to get nice. into that vibe. 
Yeah. It's, it, 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 see, it seems like it would be a very fun movie to watch with other people, to, like especially if they haven't seen it before, and just see their reaction to that ending. It's something I'm going to have to definitely show, like... Um, I will say the movie is definitely friends. like a rewatchable type of thing because like now that you know the twist and now that you know the ending like it's sort yeah. of interesting and fascinating to kind of see like all this shit like just kind of collapse onto yeah. itself um, which is why like when I when I rewatched it I realized okay I, I was a little too harsh on the film like I, it's a lot it's it's cl it's more clever than I gave it credit for I mean it still didn't change my overall experience about the film but like it, it is like more it's cl cleverer no it's more clever than I gave it credit for yeah so yeah mm -hmm. it's I don't know it's just a really fun movie like I, I I've seen like so many people just say like oh this is the worst movie of the year like oh well, I, I i'd never say that you know, so. yeah exactly no, no i'm not i'm not Sorry. i'm not sp specifically talking about you like I, i've seen like i don't know letterbox people like youtube people just like oh this is the worst movie of the year like every character was just so annoying and just like completely missed the point they of the movie the and, then, and then just like go and hype something like bullet train which is which is like <laughs> which is like I, I understand like but but they'll say bullet train is fun but bodies 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 is not fun like bodies 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 is like my my kind of fun you know what I mean oh yeah bodies 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 was way more entertaining than bullet train like <laughs> there wasn't okay I was gonna say there wasn't there was less cringe but I don't know like the cringe was more specific and more like applicable to bodies 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 bullet train was just cringe for the sake of cringe and i hated it for that you don't like um, brad pitt saying shit balls oh yeah that was <laughs> such a knee slapper i i laughed so hard when the guy referenced thomas no, the we're not for like the 670th <laughs> time yeah so <laughs> yeah I, I and I, I will say this the the film I liked the movie a lot from a technical perspective so even if I didn't care about what anything that was going on there was a lot like technically that I really liked about the movie like I liked how well shot the film was like I really liked the cinematography and the and like the use of color and then like lighting yeah. and stuff well I guess like lack of lighting because like the movie's just in the dark most of the time but like I, there was a lot of tech like clearly someone there was a competent director behind all this because like I liked the look of the movie. And the acting all around was great. Like, I think my favorite performance came from Rachel Sennett. Like, she was amazing. Like, I think oh, she, she was, was genuinely really, great. really, really good. Absolutely, yeah. dude. She, she yeah. is. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Shiva Baby, but I've been told that she's great in that. So, like, I want to see that soon. Uh, but, yeah, she was great in this. Yeah, I loved her. Oh, dude, get on Shiva Baby. Get get on that yeah. shit. You <laughs> yeah. would love it. Yeah. It is so, so good. Uh, I, I think I might like uh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies better. I'm not talking in terms of performance. I'm talking like in terms of uh, movie. Oh, like actual overall movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I might like Bodies, Bodies, Bodies better, but like, I I think she gave the better performance in Shiva Baby. She is such an amazing like comedic actress. Like, like, mm -hmm. like she just has this like delivery and just overall presence in her, and 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 she somehow just becomes like the funniest person in the room. Is Shiva yeah. Baby a comedy? I, I, everyone told me she has. It's like okay, a dark okay. comedy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It, it, at, mm -hmm. at its core, it's a comedy, but it's it's a very anxiety inducing like. It's like if Uncut Gems was a comedy. <laughs> oh, okay. That that piqued my <laughs> that interest sounds, a bit. Sounds, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought it was the same director for like a few months, like that directed both of these movies. Because, like, uh, they kind of have the same... Okay. No, um... Uh, the director of Shiva Baby... Oh, fuck. I... I'm not remembering her name. Emma Seligman. Uh, Emma Seligman, yes, Seligman. that's it. Oh, yeah. 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 I thought she... I thought she also directed this movie, but it's another movie that she directed called Bottoms, which is... Which also has, um thingy uh rachel senator it's it it's it has it isn't released yet but i'm i'm very excited for that um because yeah no her line delivery in this movie is amazing like she she knows how to speak i think a lot of the the cast actually had a lot of influence um in the type of dialogue and how they spoke within the film um yeah i wouldn't be surprised if like a, a lot of the dialogue was improv because that's how it yeah. felt like 
because like when pete davidson like every time he spoke i was like you're just saying pete davidson lines and i didn't yeah. know if it was because of the script or because he was just saying this shit you know so yeah like when he was monologuing about like that he fucks and whatnot <laughs> yeah. Like that. yeah that seemed I was like just... very improv I was just rolling my eyes, like, during those scenes. I was like, dude, like, I don't know. I don't like Pete Davidson, like, just in general, but, like, I don't know. Just it really worked said, in I the get that was the point me, of the honestly. movie, but, like, I don't know. Yeah. I was just rolling my eyes every time he said anything, so. But you yeah. can't. I mean. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I'm, I was going to segue, so you carry on. Oh, I was just going to make a joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was about to say, you don't like Pete Davidson, but but. Why so so Tim? Why did you give Marmaduke a five on Letterboxd? Uh, I did not <laughs> why, give why, Marmaduke why, a five. Why, why did you? Uh, what? Why, why did you say Pete Davidson gets the performance of, of film history? Stop gaslighting me, AJ. That's not cool. Okay. I have Jay the evidence. I have the evidence right here. Oh John wait, Apatow no shit. I lost it. I deleted the evidence. Oh shit. Bubble. You guys are gaslighting me, and I don't like this. Okay, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> you see, you you use the word gaslighting because I'm a Gen Zer. I'm allowed to use it. <laughs> oh, you're so toxic. Are you actually a Gen Zer? That's Russia. so basic. I think we <laughs> all are. Except yeah, we yeah. all are. Yeah. I mean, I was born in '96. Yes. Does that make me a millennial? I don't know. What is? A I don't think so. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I was born in 2000, by the way. I'm, I'm 22 years old, so yeah, I'm technically... I was Gen born Zier. in 2005. Really? <laughs> yeah, Jules is a little baby. <laughs> Jules is like 12, it's crazy. Uh, anyway. I'm November 9th, so I was almost 2006. So I'm, I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of yeah. are. You're the, uh, you're, you're, the, you're the fun uncle of, uh, of Far Off the Films fun podcast. Uncle. Am, yeah. I, am I like Seth uncle. Rogen in The Fablemans? I would, yeah, I guess so, yeah, but I don't like Seth Rogen either. <laughs> you do like weed, bro? <laughs> hey, little Spielberg, you want some weed to make your movie? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, anyway, you direct you movies better else? when you're high. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, we've got a lot to speak about, so... Yeah, I was gonna say, was did, did you guys have anything else you want to say? I, I'm, I, I'll I'm, let you guys like continue gushing about the movie, because I, I don't have much to say about Bodies, 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 so... I think it was else? a lot of fun, but it wasn't perfect in my books. Um, yeah. But it was it's just one of those things that's a fun watch, and rarely is elevated by the humor, and even the technical aspects as well. I think the score, they kind of shoved in a lot, and it, it was kind of the oh, same yeah, thing. Oh yeah, I did not Even like though it was kind of vibey really and cool like at it. points. <laughs> it was a cool score, but when they like played it like three times in a row, like it got a bit distracting. Um, yeah, that's just yeah. like a thing I just don't like, when they just repeat the same song like over and over again. Like Unless it's like an, a theme instrumental to like the film story or character like when you just play the same shit over and over again it's just at, at a certain point you're just doing it for the sake of yeah, doing it like it I wasn't even bad it, but yeah. like it, they just played it a lot <laughs> yeah. it's like one of my favorite scores of the year we do not we do not take disaster piece slander in this house okay <laughs> I, I loved i love the score and i love the disaster piece it's not their best score of the year that that belongs to marcel the shell i think um, mm. I still haven't seen it, so I can't yeah, no. really say anything about it. Yeah, get get on that. But like the score here, I thought like set the tone perfectly. If I'm being honest, and I've been listening to it. Sure, yeah. I mean it's I mean, appropriate. It, it's good. I'll give it like that. it was really good. But yeah. they like played it in the scene when they like went to the car, and then they like played it again when they got back from the car, and then they played it again on the stairs. And I was like, okay, guys, <laughs> let's chillax a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. let's play a new s uh, song, please. <laughs> it's yeah. like June. Yeah, oh yeah, when they play the, the, the tribal music or whatever like 700 times, <laughs> like Hans, chill it, man. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but that, yeah, it's still a really good movie, a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. I don't have really much more to say, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't have Children, much more to say. Uh, oh, okay. One of my favorites of the year, love it, five out of five. Nice. Uh, yep, uh, yeah. Yeah, do you guys, you guys want to get into ratings? Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, very, Seven. very good, great, great perception of um, 
just making someone or the audience just believe something without question mm-hmm. um and yeah. then just kind of subverting expectations so yeah it was a seven out of ten but it's closer to an eight than a six mm-hmm. luca did you give your rating sorry i didn't hear it yeah i just blooded in that i gave it a seven too um nice yeah yeah and I'm giving this one a 5 out of 10. Uh, it's closer to a 6 than a 4, if that makes you guys feel any better. But, I don't know, it's just a 5 for me. How so. about how about 5 out of 10, yeah, but it's closer to a 10 than a, than, than a 5? He sure, gave it a I 5 guess. out if, of 5. If that, if, if that makes you feel better, then yeah, sure, let's go with that. Yeah. We can pretend that Timmy's writing system is out of 5, so he gave it a 5 <laughs> out of 5. Yeah, yeah. Just pretend, if you just like distort and warp but, what I said and just gaslight yourself, then yeah, you can yeah, just that means, that, that means Dead Man's <laughs> Chest is also 5 out of 5, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then I get, yeah. so yeah, whatever makes you feel better, yeah, so... Speaking right. of things that make you feel great, uh, we saw Blonde. Ew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the new yes. uh, Andrew uh, Domenico uh, film. Domink. Dom- the Dom- new. Dominic. I have no clue what you Dominic the Donkey. That director yeah. film. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, about uh, uh, Marilyn Monroe. I mean Norma Jean. Uh, get that right, people. Um, Marilyn it's Monroe. A, it's a three-hour uh, what the fuck uh, f- fest uh, where things happen and you feel uncomfortable. Um, but as someone who considers A Clockwork Orange to be his favorite movie of all time, uh, I'm all for that shit. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, apparently this uh i don't know about you guys but there's a a small little controversy uh when it comes to this film i don't know if you guys heard about it um yeah so. no, i haven't seen anything yeah <laughs> what are people, no. what are people <laughs> saying that the director hates women and the, the film is torture porn and that like marilyn uh, apparently he doesn't care for marilyn monroe movies and no one cares about marilyn monroe or some shit like that <laughs> like stupid shit i mean like yeah that. when you How walk back you... on those interviews it genuinely seems like he doesn't give a shit <laughs> no it's just, okay and that, uh, that's kind of why the the film turned out this way honestly <laughs> well let's just give our like general thoughts about the film first and then we can get into all the right. details later all right. yeah so yeah aj you 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 wanted to say something so yeah i'll just let, let you go first like what did you think about blonde well i was just gonna say like how fucking stupid do you have to be in order to just like shit on your own movie and then like shit on the subject Curly of your hairy. movie. Yeah. Wait, what, what Did you just say? like, I haven't watched like any do you really think that is that gonna sell your movie? Is that gonna make people like <laughs> love your movie? I don't fucking he, know. Like, Jules, he, he said he's he an idiot. Much, he doesn't even he wasn't even a big fan of Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, yeah, he's, oh. he's and then he an idiot. Like, movie. why would you say that like, in an interview? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's worse things the director has said. Remember yeah, like people Mar- have said more insane shit than that. Yeah, like, Lars like... von Trier said, "I understand Hitler." Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Yeah. I don't know. Like, we'll talk about this like when it comes when we talk about Perfect Blue. But like, I don't know. Like, even if you don't give a shit about your subject matter, it's like yeah. I don't know. That's not really that important to me. Like, as long as you just make a good, interesting movie, then that's all I care about. Like, you could hate. I don't know Transformers or something, but if you make a good Transformers movie, then I don't know. <laughs> but, but, like, I just think of but, but, but like, what to, like, motivated you to like, yeah, get on the project. Besides like a paycheck, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides money, um, yeah. So AJ, what were your thoughts on uh, uh, Blondie? I guess so. Blondie, um, for a while. This was my most anticipated movie of the year. And, and it was mainly because of, like, how much Andrew Dominic was hyping up his own movie. And I love the <laughs> casting choice of Ana de Armas as Marilyn Monroe. But I, yeah, I, I didn't... she was great. Yeah. I, I, I didn't I really, like, educate I myself. I didn't think that this was going to be, like, a three-hour-long exploitation piece. I thought this was just going to be, like, a love letter to Marilyn Monroe. But, but then... Like, you know, reviews started coming out, people were hating it, and I was getting worried. And, um, so, I watched the movie, and I, I love the cinematography, I, I love the score, but, but, like, and I do love Ana de Armas, but, but this entire movie just felt like, it was exactly what I feared. Like, like, this was just 
a three hour long exploitation piece. It, it wasn't fun to watch at know. all. Like, Everyone like, keeps saying it was an exploitation piece, but I didn't get that impression at all. Like, yes, you go through a, like a lot of torture porn shit, but I didn't think it was like exploitation. Like, I didn't get what, what everyone was saying when they kept calling it. I think it, it definitely is. There are times it does feel exploitative, but there are other times. It, 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 to me, it felt yeah. incredibly She's topless, like more than half of the movie, like, and the the whole movie is trying to comment on how she was like this sexual toy but then when the movie actively also presents her as that as well i think that's when it kind of gets a bit exploitative i don't know my and justification also, and for... and also that she the whole film was about how she was like used and abused by hollywood but then hollywood's making a movie about that use and abuse of her which is... yeah like yeah, it was exactly. it was like when um it was when the chip and dale rescue rangers decided to poke fun at Bobby Driscoll like you pieces of shit. <laughs> I can't yeah, believe I've exactly. referenced Chip and Dale so many times on this podcast, but that's just what's happening. Um sorry, AJ, continue your thoughts, yeah. No, the, the like the, this movie felt completely like exploitative and I, I don't want to be like that guy, but like it, it it also felt completely misogynistic. Like this, yeah. this, this felt like, hey, let's watch, like, women in Hollywood suffer. Like, this is yeah. only, this is only the negative things that happened to Marilyn. And and a lot of it is bullshit. Like, a, a lot of it is fictionalized. I know, uh, I know it's based off a novel. Well, guess what? The novel sucks, yeah. too. <laughs> oh, does it? I've never read the novel. Oh, I, I've never read it, read it either. Yeah. But, like, if, if it's, like, completely fictionalized, completely, like, exploiting her, then, like... You know, I, I'm not reading it. <laughs> it, 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 it just completely, it completely just pissed me off. It, 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 it its sole purpose was Felt just like to be like, some scenes. was just to be like, artsy, I guess. And I have no problem with like art films. Some of my favorite movies are art films, but like her suffering is not art. So Her you, trauma is uh, not art. So would you say the film is just like, um, like in the same way like a Lars von Trier or like Gaspar Noé or like Salo or something like that? It's just like torture for the sake of torture, basically like Holocaust, Holocaust or something, or something like, like that. Yeah. I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 a fair like can, that's a fair thing to say. Like there, a lot of bullshit is being said about this movie, but like yeah, that's that's a fair that's a fair thing to say. Like I I, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but. I don't know, like, so, for me, I, I, I don't know, I, I mostly focused on what this movie was, and what it was trying to go for, and, and if I, and when I blocked out all the unnecessary, like, vitriol against the film, and just examined it for what it was, I actually appreciated it for what it was, because, like, because here's the thing, I, I was looking through all the reviews, like, just to see, like, what the general vibe of the film was, and, and I, when I came across Mark Kermode's film, he said this really interesting thing where it's like, if you look at this like a traditional biopic, you will get pissed off. Like, you won't find any enjoyment out of this. Like, you, you'll you need to, like, find something else to, like, satisfy that. But if you look at it as, like, a – as essentially a horror film, because that's what the film is. It's a horror movie. Like, it's a horror movie that just happens to have a character named, named Marilyn Monroe – then I think, like, the film is effective and it, the film accomplishes what it wants to accomplish if you look at it that way. And that's how I looked at the film. I looked at it as, like, this sort of, like, David Lynch, Lars von Trier, Gaspar Noé, like, horror bullshit. And and I think it helps the... I, I think it, it accomplishes exactly what it wants to do. It, it's not... I'm not saying it's, like, the most pleasurable experience in the world. Like, obviously. Like, I, I'm probably never going to see this again. But, like, I was surprised how, like enthralled and almost like kind of because the film is clearly trying to make you uncomfortable it's clearly trying to get this like really negative reaction out of you and it's not like some bullshit like like a like a like a fucking uh uh god what's his face it's not like knock knock or some shit like that like an eli, eli Roth Roth. movie where it's like he's just pissing you off for the sake of pissing you off it's like dude you're just like a, a dipshit like that's all you are here it's like I don't know, like, I feel like there was more to it than that, like, there was this whole, like, you know, yes, it's, like, Norma Jean's just, like, 
this tortured soul who's like going through so much shit but like i feel like in terms of what it's trying to go for and like the effectiveness of like drawing out this like horrific experience that she goes through because the only times where she kind of have these moments of solemn or peace are like during those small moments like when she has that like threesome with like those two guys one of them like i think was like charlie chaplin's son or something like that and then the others uh, and then that small moment when they're out in the beach with um with uh, Adrian Brody's character, like, those were, like, small, quiet moments that, like, kind of help alleviate sort of, like, the really disgusting, tense, like, horror shit when it comes to, like, the Hollywood stuff, but it's, like, those moments don't last for long because she's thrown back into, like, the Hollywood machine, you know, and, like, in that sense, I, I was very thoughtful, and I was very, like, when I looked at it from that angle, I was, like, okay, I think this movie... It, it's not as bad as I, I feel like people are saying it. I think, like, this movie does a couple of things pretty well. And I liked the cinematography, like you said. I loved the score. The music for this film was fucking awesome. Oh, no, like, it was. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I listened to the, the music on Spotify uh, for a while after I saw the film. And, yeah, it was great. Like, I... And Ana de Armas' performance was, like, fantastic. Like, yeah, her Cuban accent, like, kind of got in the way every now and then. But at a certain point, I was just like, eh, I'm just kind of used to it at, at this point. So, yeah, I... I don't know. Like I, I, I liked this. I, I liked it for what it was. You know, not. I, I'm, I'm not trying to like. You know, I know I'm in the minority when I also say this, but I don't know. Like I, I think from a certain specific context, when I looked at it from that context, I, I appreciated the film for what it was. So I don't know. I just think the fact that it, you need to rely on a certain specific context to enjoy a movie that I think is supposed to be a biopic is kind of weird i guess I, I like, don't know. like the film if has you were like, able to enjoy it yeah. with that context that's great and that's cool that you were able to enjoy it but a lot of people are looking at this movie to be a biopic if if they're if but i just the, think that's the wrong if the way dude to look wanted the to make a movie <laughs> yeah. about someone in a horrific situation being exploited by the hollywood system then they could have made that movie and not had to involve marilyn monroe and and um exploit her i guess like yeah that like this movie does like yeah i don't know <laughs> what why does this movie have to be about marilyn monroe though like hasn't she sh- have, hasn't she i can't talk sorry <laughs> hasn't <laughs> she <laughs> We're all yeah. tired. hasn't she suffered enough like I don't know. Like, you could make yeah. the same Hollywood argument for something like Last still, Temptation of Christ or, like, Spencer or whatever. Like, you know, like, those movies, think, like, you know, they don't the they don't technically are, like, stories about Jesus or Princess Diana. They just happen to have characters that are named Jesus and Princess Diana, you know? I just yeah. think yeah. that, like, like, Spencer is, is very different. Well, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's similar and different at the same time because Spencer, like, <laughs> the first shot of Spencer is text that says this is a fable based on real events the first shot of blonde is this weird like like uh, uh, suggesting what she experienced as a child and then doesn't really tell you that it's supposed to be something that is isn't to take seriously or isn't uh, ex- like like this whole movie feels like this is her story guys this is her story and if this is yeah, her story why did she not have any input in it like the narrator is like her father and the whole film is her like being controlled and like going through these these awful relationships and these awful like dating scenarios and she doesn't even have like her own input in her own story I don't know. Exactly. Like, and- like, Spencer feels like a genuine reflection and, like, liberation for a character, um, even if it does take creative liberties. Like, I'm all for taking creative liberties to, like, like enhance a story, but this film, I just didn't really see where those creative liberties were trying to go and what they were trying to express, um, oh. in my opinion. Also, with Spencer, yeah. like, it, it, it felt so clear that, like, even though, like, it's it's a fable based on real events. Like you could, you could feel the care that Pablo Larraín, yeah, like had you, for yeah. Princess Diana. You, you know, like that that entire movie, like, like Princess Diana was someone who was was someone who was suffering a lot, but yeah. but but it never yeah. felt to a point of exploitation. And in, in fact, like 
the whole move the yeah. whole movie of Spencer kind of felt cathartic in a way, it's especially yeah. by the end of the movie. Like Spencer, like Spencer, Spencer isn't just like breakdown. let's watch, <laughs> let's watch like Princess Diana suffer and have panic attacks. Yeah, like, like, yeah, exactly. Like Spencer to me was just like this kind of thing happens to a lot of people. Here's someone that yeah, you guys I... probably know, and you might be able to relate to it. With Blonde, it's just mm-hmm. like let's just watch Marilyn Monroe suffer. There's no good things that gonna happen with marilyn monroe andrew dominic like saying he didn't care about marilyn monroe like like, like what are you trying to do like what was this who is this movie for that's what i'm wondering like, like who is yeah. this movie for <laughs> <I> also, <laughs> yeah. like spencer has a lot of strong themes going for it as well like even if it it does show like similar of like things like both the films are about this woman in the limelight, getting all this attention, and how they were exploited by a higher power. I don't know, um, like, Blonde did that, like, I think it ju- did, it, did that just as well. I mean, I... in Blonde, like, she gets exploited the whole movie, then she dies. Like, yeah. Spencer, she gets exploited and goes it... through this emotional journey, but gets, like, a sense of liberation and, like, like sense of care for the character and of her as a person, and not just her as this public figure. They, they try. You, you they humanize her. Sorry. They yeah. humanize Princess Diana. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jules. Were you gonna say something? I was gonna say. Um, I think it mostly suffers from the fact that it needs to be kind of like a traditional, like Hollywood biopic, which I think just. I think these biopics, like no matter what you choose, like they, they just never seem to work. Like the structure they have and whatnot. Yeah, that's why, and, like, um, biopics yeah. have, like, a negative connotation to them, because they're just, like, mm. formulated bullshit, yeah. Um, and also, I think, yeah, I think there is, you can make, like, a really, like, grim, depressing movie, like, and do it well. Are you guys familiar with, um, Justin, Justin Curzel and his films? No, I'm not familiar. I, yeah. I recently saw Knit Ram, and I, I feel yeah. like you're about to reference that movie am i correct yeah that's what i was gonna say it was just um knit ram which is such a just gloomy depressing just gritty gritty film uh, which just comes to like such a, a shocking conclusion but it, it's just more yeah. of a character study about this one person who is just br- a broken soul essentially but it doesn't it doesn't glamorize or try and make you feel yeah sympathy exactly. with what he does without spoiling what he does do yeah that's um, how i felt with like this it's like yeah it's like she goes through a bunch of shit like she's like her soul's being tortured she's physically just going through this tortures of it but it wasn't like it didn't feel like exploitation because like it just felt like the way it was directed it's like you kind of you feel really sorry for her you feel like sympathetic towards her like like i was imagining like to me this felt like sort of like a like it was like almost kind of like Eraserhead you know like Eraserhead was also just like this dreary like gloomy depressing like just like experience but like and like and it just and it doesn't have a happy ending spoilers for Eraserhead if anyone gives a shit um <laughs> But like in, in a racer head, like some well, I guess I won't spoil it. Something happens where it's like the main character just essentially gives up. Like he's just kind of lost that like will, or at least it's implied that. And like this is that's the sort of similar thing I got like with the ending, where because like she goes through so much shit, and like and you can feel that because like the film is like purposely like very very long. Like yeah, like I'll admit that like this film did not need to be three yeah. hours long. And it's but, boring. like, I think it's still just kind of, it's still communicated its point where it's, like, she goes through so much shit over a long period of time where to the point where even you feel like your weight, as like, your soul has been, like, weighed down and anchored by all this bullshit that she just kind of, like, I can't stand this anymore. Like, I can't take this anymore. Like, that scene where, um, you know, and, like, she tries to get people to see her way. Like, she, because she's, like, all alone. Like, that scene where her and, um... The guy who played the main character in uh, uh, in vinyl, I don't know his name. Uh, the the baseball player dude, like Bobby when they're having Cannavale. that conversation. Yeah, Bobby Cannavale or whatever his name is. Yeah, From he. Um, 
yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> um, when they're having that conversation, they're like, what do you want? Like, what do you want to get out of this? And she was like, well, I want to be a serious actor. I want to blah, 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 blah. And then he just doesn't give a shit. He's just kind of, eh, whatever. And then she's like, but I also want babies. Like, I love babies. I want families. And he's like, oh, babies. You, you said babies. You said thing I like. You know, it's like, I think like scenes like that are just like really like, well presented in in terms of like just sort of this like really excruciating and like exhausting thing and i don't think this is like a cannibal holocaust eli roth bullshit like oh the torture happens because lol it's funny and fun or whatever like i don't know there was more purpose to it than i feel like a lot of people are giving it credit for and like to make the spencer comparison like yeah like these are totally different movies they're they're going for different things but i don't know it's like yes like the movie did need like a yeah, I don't know. Like they, th- this movie needed like a. This is not based on real events. Like this is a fictionalized account. Blah 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 blah. Like I think if it had something like that, it it would have like set the tone a little better. But I don't know. I knew going in that this was like a fictionalized account anyway. So I was like, okay, like this is not real. I get that. I just want to see like how things g- turn out. And it was not what I expected. But I was. I don't know. I was I was bored. I was bored at times for sure. I'll give you that. But there was never a point where I was like I couldn't take my eyes away. You know, maybe it's because it was so fucking torturous and and exhausting. But you know, I I just think it did its job like effectively. I don't know. I I know I'm alone when I say that, but I that's just how I feel. So mm. I respect I your know. opinion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who goes first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, AJ, you can go. You can go. Oh no! I, I just say, I, one of you. I'll, no, no, no! All, all I said was, "Is I, I, I respect your opinion." <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> not a lot of people do. So. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't. I don't, I just... I don't agree personally, but I respect your opinion. Yeah, yeah I, I was gonna say, do I you guys really at least agree. see where I'm coming from? Like, am I sounding yeah, crazy? Yeah, I do or... see where you're coming from. I do to a certain extent. I just, I, I don't really see i don't really agree with like the dismissal of like the exploitation aspects of it though like i think well, okay i assuming like it is exploited like i'm not any i'm not saying like the whole movie's not exploitative there were exploitative parts like that scene where she like goes to the president and just essentially like blows him like that that yeah, was just God. like that was like okay that's just teetering on the edge of exploitation like that was like one of the few parts where it's like okay like this is just exploitation but i don't know like when i'm thinking of like scenes that are just like terrifying because this film was terrifying at certain points like the like the abortion scene where she like she's begging like to to like say please stop like don't and like and then she runs off and like into the fire like that that was like terrifying like i was scared like during that moment i I was into it for a bit i will agree Mm -hmm. um i just think it got very long and like overstayed its welcome especially it with like yeah it's too long, long definitely yeah, it's way too it's, it's long definitely yeah long. yeah even yeah. like visually like you guys said that you were you really loved it but i don't even think like it was good visually at all like yeah, me neither there was a few shots that i really liked like i really loved when she kind of when she fell over on the beach and like she like got covered in blood and then like all those like camera <laughs> people like popped out. Too. <laughs> I yeah. kinda laughed at that too. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, but, I get what they but, were going for, but I was laughing during that moment. Yeah. Yeah. But know. but like a lot of the film on a visual level just feels like really inconsistent. Like at first I was like, okay, are they gonna like are they trying to like capture like uh, maybe it's in black and white and it's and it's bordered because this is her emotional state at the time and then when it turns into color she's feeling slightly more happy but then eventually it's like w- in the same scene there's like one shot where it's in black and white and then one shot when it's in color and then one shot when there's a white shot and then one shot where the aspect ratio yeah, changes I, and then I it, will, it was pretty, it's really, it was pretty like, yeah consistent. yeah that's like, my the, major issue like, i had like if you have purpose into making scenes black and white or having something in a specific aspect ratio like i'm all for that but this film just like chose to be black and white or chose a specific yeah. aspect ratio just because it fucking felt like and it. i don't like, even mind it that much like people people kind of have this this weird um perception where like if something's in a di- different aspect ratio they need it needs to have a point for it and sometimes things just look aesthetically pleasing and i'm totally okay with that but this film yeah, just i guess it just it just 
number one, it didn't, it wasn't that ecstat ecstatically pleasing because it was switching between so many things all the time. And and then I even struggled to find the visual purpose be behind it as well. And it just was very messy with that regard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you're going yeah. to like change aspect ratio like that, like I would like for it to have some purpose. Like there, there's a yeah. lot of aspect ratio changes in something like, I don't know, like, like it comes at night. Like, it comes yeah. at night has, like, lots of aspect ratio changes, but, like, there's purpose behind that. Like, yeah, there's, exactly. like, an intentional choice to do that. Here, it just felt like, I don't know, Andrew D Dominico was just like, eh, fucking whatever. Let's shoot this in 4x3. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's also, it's interesting that we also watched Perfect Blue, because... Yeah, I was gonna say, just, like, yeah. I did not intend this to be a comparison, but yeah, it, it was perfect two are, that like, we did really that. Yeah. It was perfect yeah. And it just really rubs me the wrong way when, yeah. like, <laughs> when Marilyn Monroe is, like, clearly, like, uncomfortable with the situation and stuff, and then they cut to, like, shots of her, like, topless and like zoom-ins on her crotch and like everyone's like all cheery and happy and stuff compared to like how it's really perfectly conveyed in perfect blue like i'm sure yeah. we'll get onto this later but like perfectly. like images of her being fully nude but like there's this haunting score in the background kind of like conveying that in the background like maybe on on the front she's okay with it and like but obviously yeah, she's yeah, being yeah. Like, exploited really, really, and then in yeah. the background there's this haunting nature behind it and i just i never really got this feeling like if they were trying to convey how haunting and and like how it really affected her in this movie it just it, do, it doesn't really convey that when they're also literally treating her like this kind of object to be like viewed and yeah i don't know i don't know i there were s some scenes that kind of did that like the scene where uh, a lot was near there was the end a of the lot film. <laughs> there was near the end of the film i don't remember where specifically but like and mark kermode said something about this too where it was like when she like puts on that smile and like she like kisses like the mirror or whatever like you could interpret that as like in a horror movie that would be like sort of like a demon possession scene or whatever it's like her like saying fuck it like this is how people want to see me then fine like this is just what's happening sort of thing yeah, i don't know I it could have communicated that There's better i i'm just but scene. you know whatever so um yeah yeah uh, did you guys um, think i mean the... that's like one shot of spencer like when she's standing in the shower and like covering herself like like holding herself like that one shot in spencer like does does like what this film and like how you perceive yourself and how yeah. you look way better than <laughs> than the I whole mean, of this movie. I mean, Spencer's a better movie. movie than this. I'll I'll admit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Sorry if I'm like continuing to go back no, to Spencer, it's fine. but that was Don't my worry. favorite it, film from last year. So. It's a fair yeah. comparison. Yeah, uh, Jules. Yeah. Sorry, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, did you guys think the the nudity was kind of like excessive in some bits? Because I was like, I thought it was kind of yes. tame compared to what I was expecting. I mean, yeah, but there was, like, know. scenes where it's, like, was there really a point that she needed to have, like, her tits out or something? Yeah, like, no, there definitely uh, the, the scene wasn't. I'm thinking of is <laughs> the one where the husband, the baseball player, comes in and, like, beats her for the first time. It's like, why did, why did we need... Why did she need to be naked for that one? Yeah, like, he handed her a photo of her tits out while she had her tits out. And, because like, it's like anime. In anime, yeah. it's, it's like funny because needs... titties, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, there know. needs to be a point to it, like, in um, Upbring Up... The wolf of wall street like, yeah it's I, excessive I it's but there is a point to it yeah it's... yeah i mean like i remember that um scene near the end where it, everything's just kind of like uh distorted but she's like running around completely naked and at that <laughs> point i was just like okay this is honestly going on for far too yeah, long like, like, like you don't need to like get, get get to it I will say the ending kind of got uh, Neil Breeny at times. I don't know if that was intentional. <laughs> I don't know if that was intentional, but like it kind of got. I can't believe like, you Neil committed Breeny. suicide. I can't believe you committed suicide. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> oh god yeah. I, I love neil breen um anyway do, do you guys have anything more uh, to say because i'm ready to move on so yeah um, I'm, I'm ready i'm, I'm just gonna like it honestly 
I'm just gonna. I hate the poster. Of... I'll say that too. Fuck this movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck I hate the poster. Yeah, the it looks poster so is ugly. dog shit. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I hate seeing it when fuck. I open Letterbox like every day. It's like fuck. Isn't it okay. cool? You can see like her face close up. That's like yeah. cool, right? Yeah, yeah that, we're that's doing not the same things that we've done since done. Avatar, like all the way, way, way back. It's when. a good incentive yeah. to make me go Patreon on Letterbox so I can change the poster. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I want to get a just. So I could like change that poster, like yeah. You know what? I actually have Patreon. I'll do it right now. Yeah, yeah you yes. should. <laughs> you should do not it, be forced it. to look at that all the time. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, do you want to get into ratings? Unless AJ, you had something else you wanted to say about um, uh, t- b- b- bl- uh, perfect blue real life. Uh, I think it is perfect. Do. It is nice. Ooh. Poopy. Ooh. I did not like it. Perfect. I did not like Fuck this you, movie. Um, I, I want to ask this. I want to. I want to ask this. I I've Sorry. never seen any of Andrew Dominic's previous films. Like I've Me never neither. seen Killing Them Softly or Assassination. Yeah, yeah, so I have. Yeah, I have no okay, point no. of reference or context. So like, okay, I don't so want you need to, to watch. Now. People people bring up Assassination of Jesse James and Killing Them Softly. You need to watch Chopper. His his debut film. That yeah, is I've heard that's great too. Opus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Like he is a competent director. Like okay, killing, yeah. like killing him this softly. Is his first assassination of Jesse James. Film, they're I've great. They're fantastic. For. But but, awesome. but like this movie, it's just like it's like he showed his true colors. Mm. <laughs> showed his perfect blue. Yeah. Showed so. his perfect blue. Yeah. It's kind of like that <laughs> mind hunter. That mind hunter paycheck made him want to do. Made him want to do something else so he could get paid. The more. episodes on mind hunter he directed were great. Yeah, like it yeah. was very much like you were. It was a well done imitation of like David Fincher. So, and I love that show. Please bring yeah. season three back, please. <laughs> I'm gonna ask David Fincher for an autograph, but it's actually a contract for Mind Hunter season three. Yeah, <laughs> force him to make a season three of Mind Hunter. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm giving this one a seven out of ten. Uh, closer to a six than an eight, but uh, seven. So, sorry. Yeah. I I know I'm not allowed to have this opinion, but Ree! whatever. <laughs> I'm no, leaning I'm between a five or a six. It's probably going to be a five, and all I've got to say is that I'm I'm going to stay up a little bit later so I can edit the ending scene of the dad saying "Welcome to the afterlife" to Neil Breen saying "Why did you commit suicide?" <laughs> the, scene, nice. the scene where the dad's like, "You are welcome to heaven, Norma Jean." I was like, "This is a Neil Breen movie." <laughs> that was yeah. straight from a Neil Breen that was film. Silly. How could you commit? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, I I gave this a four because I don't even I don't hate it that much. But, like, speaking about it made me, like, kind of hate it even more. <laughs> um, but, I, I mean, I was into it in the first, like, 30, 40-ish minutes. It does yeah. have some uh, good uh, aspects of Anna Dead Animus's performance, besides her accent, like, like slipping in, like, I don't know, constantly. I thought she was great. Yeah. Yeah. And there was some music stuff and some visual stuff I liked, despite my problems with it. So, four... Yeah, four. It's still bad, but... Uh, competently bad, I guess. I don't it, know. <laughs> there are admirable things about the movie. Yeah. 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 Um, Cinematography was excellent. Yeah. AJ? Uh, for me, it is a turd wrapped in blonde tinfoil. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, like you say, competently bad. That's why I say turd wrapped in blonde tinfoil. So, one and a half out of five for me. It's not a big diarrhea shit, but it's a it's a regular doo doo. Yeah, it's not the Pinocchio uh, <laughs> shit, but it, yeah. it, it is something. Yeah, so I it's really not the wanted high a quality fox. shit of Pinocchio. I really wanted a fox at some point in Blonde to just like show up and just like grunt chaos or something like that. Yeah, oh, no. it just felt appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyway, uh, yeah, so let's get into the recommendation. I think we're a good yep. chunk into the podcast. So, uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, we've been going for like an hour now. Yeah, so um, these next couple episodes, we're doing a horror-themed uh, recommendations because October and crap. Um, so um, so it was my turn. Uh, it was my recommendation to recommend the first horror film, and I recommended uh, Perfect Blue, uh, 1997, directed by Satoshi Kone. This is actually his directorial debut. Um 
Really? And yeah, yeah, this is his first ever cuz like the only th- other the only other thing he directed uh was like a like a like a either an OVA or uh like a straight or like a long episode of like a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure movie or something like that. I don't know. Like I I've never seen it since <laughs> I've never seen JoJo. Um but this is his directorial debut and the way he kind of came across this was like actually super interesting i i mean i'll look I'll, I'll get into the plot first and then i can like g- get into like the backstory of the film because it's it's really interesting um so yeah basically the premise um it's uh it's basically an american black swan um uh it's a movie yeah. that darren aronofsky mm, has ripped suspicious. off like six yeah it's a movie you that darren Japanese aronofsky black has ripped swan. off like 600 times uh, no matter how much he wants to deny it <laughs> <laughs> um um, and basically the plot is that we follow this, uh, this, this woman named Mima. Um, she's, uh, a former pop idol who, uh, eventually decides to transition into becoming an actress. Um, and, but apparently a lot of, um, uh, let's call them Mima simps, uh, are not, uh, cool with that. They're like, Hey, you didn't tell Tier us about three this. So, yeah. So we're gonna, <laughs> um, ruin your life and, uh, you're gonna go crazy. And, uh, she does, she goes crazy and uh, this is like the introduction of Satoshi Kon's like style, I guess. Like, because this is the first film where yeah. he like really does that whole like what is reality, what is fantasy thing. And I think he does that. He pulls this off excellently, excellently well. Um, and it's yeah, and it's like sort of like it's less about like a, a serial killer like stalker movie and more just sort of like the mental breakdown of a woman who like is just honestly very naive and like it you could honestly look at this as like a cautionary like coming of age story where like a woman needs like she needs to grow up essentially um and about like nostalgia and all this other stuff and yeah it's uh it's one of my favorite movies of all time it's actually my fourth favorite film uh if you follow me on letterbox so uh yeah what did you guys think about uh uh perfecto azul i guess <laughs> um okay so this was my introduction to satoshi kong i I had heard about him i had heard about him but i for some reason i never thought to watch his movies and Mm -hmm. i went into perfect blue completely 100 percent blind i saw one like you didn't know anything about the movie i saw one photo (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I saw one photo and I knew that it was like a uh, black swanny ish. Um, mm. I did not expect this movie to hit me like a fucking freight train. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, this movie made me depressed. Like it, it, it made, oh, yeah. it, it completely just disturbed me. It completely just, Gave me this complete existential crisis, a uh, uh, like kind of like distorting like what's real and what isn't, and right after the movie, especially with the screwdriver scene and 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 the very ending, it, terrifying, alo- yeah, alone, yeah. like horrifying. <laughs> it, it it put me into a completely. It, it it put me in, in such a bad headspace. Like like I was in like a very like irritable mood. Like right after I know I know I sound like I'm I'm being like um I'm I know I sound like I'm exaggerating a bit, but I'm not. Like it it, it completely disturbed me that much, and I I I think like I I think what disturbs me most about it is that. In a sense, it is very relevant. Yeah, I would say it's even more relevant now than it was in 1997. Yeah, exactly. It really because like we have this like Truly. we have this obsession with this like fantasy of ourselves, like this avatar yeah. of ourselves, and and you know we we always tend to like you know jump the gun when it comes to things like that. Like like we don't really like um. We don't really like. How do how do I put this? We we, we have this we have this like ourselves. idea of like yeah. of ourselves and and of fame. We, we we have this idea of fame that like fame is good. You know, you'll be rich, you'll be happy for the rest of your life. 
but in this movie, like she's tortured. It like, like that that the rape scene in this movie, like trigger warning by the way, like, like yeah, it's, these, these, we're, we're spoiling the movie, like spoilers, a lot a lot of trigger warnings. So yeah, the the SA scene in the movie, like I I know I know that it's like it's staged, like like it's supposed to be like performance within real. the movie. But shit, like that was so disturbing. Like, yeah. like her blood curdling screams, and 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 just like the close ups of her body, and like like the guy taking off her underwear, he's taking off his underwear. Like, it it, it really, it, it it was so just disgusting for me. But but in like, I I know it's like meant to be disgusting i i love the movie i i really yeah. did love the movie i don't think i'm, I'm ever gonna watch yeah. this again because it, it, it it's just sense. yeah it is just so like it's just so despairing <laughs> it is yeah. so despairing it, it, it is so hopeless and and it's kind of like laughing at our face at at, at any kind of like idea of hope and while also just kind of calling us I hope this makes sense, but it's also just kind of calling us narcissistic for mm-hmm. for just having this like unrealistic like idea of fame. Yeah, I have a lot to say about that uh, specifically, but I want to get everyone else's uh, general thoughts out real quick. So yeah, yeah. I, I uh, hope Luke, that was uh, good. <laughs> no, that no, that was great. Yeah, I'm I'm just glad you really liked it. Yeah, so yeah, uh, Jules and uh, Luca, whichever one, whoever wants to speak first, uh, what'd you guys think? I thought it was really, really, really good. Um, it's probably, I think, the best movie we've watched for this podcast so far. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I made the mistake of watching it first thing in the morning directly after I had my breakfast. So oh, you poor the... fool. You <laughs> I dumb <know>. bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was pretty enraptured and just really, really disturbed at just what I was seeing. And yeah, the that that rape scene was just like borders the line between like is it acting or not and just like what's happening and just watching this like really like seemingly just horrific thing going down and just yeah. it blurring the lines between fiction and reality mm-hmm. and i think it, everything it did it did so well did you guys watch yeah. the uh the english dub or the japanese one who the fuck would want to watch the English dub of this movie? <laughs> I watched a little bit of like, the English the, dub. Okay, <laughs> I, I, okay, I don't want to make this, like, a thing, but, like, I'm just going to point it out there. You are a degenerate piece of shit if you watch anime dub. There are only five animes that are acceptable to watch dub. And this is not one of them. Like, the, the music itself, if you listen to the English dub <laughs> versions of the, the music, it's awful. It sucks. Like, I don't know how anyone could listen to that and, like, you know, and not cringe, you know? So. My childhood... My childhood copy of Totoro, which I watched religiously, is the English dub. dub. You've, yeah, I, I'm. I don't know. Like that's. So I've I, to- I've gotten used to that one. I think the Ghibli oh, dubs are pretty good. Yeah, Ghibli dubs are fine. They're decent. Yeah. yeah so anyway, Luca, what did you think of uh, uh, Perfecto Bluo? So. Yeah, Perfect Blue was. That was probably the first one out of all of us to actually ever see this movie because I think all of you guys watched it for the first time this year. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. I've seen it but... like a, a number of times after I saw it for the first time. Yeah, so yeah, um, this is a movie I watched a couple of years ago. I thought it was really interesting and really like mind bending and I guess meta and important. Um, I didn't vibe with it as much this viewing, um, but I still appreciate mm. it and recognize how important and how amazing it is to mm-hmm. this day. Um, I think I don't want to say I got everything out of it on the first viewing, but I just didn't. It just didn't have that same personal kick um, that it did when yeah. I first watched it. I do have a few flaws with it. Um, That's I think I'm. I think like I'm gonna be the only fucking person on the planet to say that this. But some of the animation. I don't think is 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 aged Shut well, up. honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. um, 
there are parts that look a little dated, but I think it holds up relatively. Yeah, it's yeah. a little dated, but like I yeah, because no, here's like, the thing. I uh, oh sorry, I'll let you finish your point, and then I'll say my thing. Like later. like some of it is beautiful. Like like Satoshi Kon's style is meant to be this absurd and kind of grotesque in ways. Almost um, like a Charlie but, Kaufman type style. Like I would say he's. I, very I'm, I'm mainly speaking like more of like the the like like the actual animated like character design oh, style. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, like all of his characters, like like look like unconventional and real and but not real, like you know, like weird and stuff, and all uh, across all of his things. Um, but there's definitely a few parts of this movie where the main character looks like unintentionally like weird. Like, like her eyes are like too far apart from one another, and she's just drawn a bit weirdly. Like that's a bit distracting. Um, but besides from that, like the it looks beautiful. I loved how sparingly but effectively like blood was used in this movie. Yeah, like, it wasn't like a Eli Roth bullshit like blood. Yeah, use. like, like <laughs> I swear an anime like yeah. There's some an anime shit that I can't movie. handle, and in this movie, like like with. I hate that anime is like anime. Sometimes when uh, people scream, it just sounds like sexual moans. I think that's really distracting. <laughs> I'm glad I'm points. not the only one who has had those thoughts before. Yeah, I, I I think it's really distracting, especially in scenes where like she's trying to run away from people and like uh, cry in anguish. Um, I think that's quite distracting. But and. And that, one of the anime things is, like, when someone gets hit, like, blood just starts bursting out their nose yeah. and shit. Japan but, like, must I, have the sharpest fucking umbrellas ever. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I liked in this movie that blood was, like, used in a really, like, haunting and, like, sparing way. And it made it really effective. It made the horror aspects really effective. But, yeah, this movie is awesome. Uh, really, really effective in current celebrity culture and and popular culture. Like there's stuff that remain that reflects to this day that like like you guys said it's it's even more uh, important and apparent to this day. Like there was like a bit where they like had like a little podcast in this movie, and it's like that yeah. that shit's more <laughs> more alive they today. Just, like like internet, real. that's, that's more us. alive yeah. today. We're, yeah, we're, ch we're charm. Yeah, we're charm. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just. <laughs> It's aged extremely well, and ha ha comments on some really, really uh, dramatic and important things. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I want to kind of bring <clears throat> some context to the film, because I did some research about the film afterwards uh, that I didn't do beforehand. So so apparently, so the film uh, so the film is based on a book, um, and apparently they were going to make like a live-action film adaptation for the book. But then, like, I don't know, like, worst comes to worst, like, funding came through, like, fell out, and they, they eventually tra changed it to, like, a direct-to-video film, and then eventually they just, like, said, fuck it, because they lost funding for that, so they said, fuck it, we're just gonna make this, like, an OVA, we're gonna make this, um, like, a direct-to-video uh, anime. Um, and Satoshi Kon was brought on because apparently the producer at Madhouse, who, who was the production company behind this film, they, they saw that Jojo Bizarre Adventure movie and they were like, Hey, we, that was cool. Can you make this movie? And apparently he, he did not like the, the, the subject of the film because like, apparently he said in interviews that one, he doesn't like horror films and two, he doesn't like, um, like pop idol culture, but he, he came on because he like, he was like attracted by the idea of being a director on like this big project like this. And so, but the thing is though, it's that it was just sort of approached as an OVA, which for those of you who don't know, OVA stands for original video animation. It's just like, it's basically the equivalent of like a direct to video movie or something like that. It's just anime. That's like direct, direct to like video or something like that. So, Shadow um, but apparently, OVA. yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm, apparently I've been forced at, to watch that by my friend. Yeah. Um, and apparently at, like, the last you. minute when they were making the movie, like, they just said, oh, shit, like, let's make this a film and then, let, like, like, let's distribute it. And, like, and the thing is, though, is that they did not expect the critical success that this film would get because, like, <laughs> horror yeah. in anime is well not, yeah, horror in anime is not a very, like, popular genre. 
Be- and like it, like even things that are kind of horror, like they like a uh, manga and anime artists have to change it so drastically to something that's like oh, but it's also like this is about vampires, but there's also like robots and stuff. Like they have to like change it so drastically where it's like horror is not the only thing about it. So it, they were surprised how well received the film got to the point where like Darren Aronofsky like bought the American rights to this movie or something like that. Um, and, made... and it jump started. Diddy, though. It did. Yeah, I don't know. Diddy. Yeah. So he I don't just think remade he did. the movie. I think like, they talk about what exactly happened and like that Satoshi Kon documentary, but I haven't seen that. So. Yeah, and apparently he doesn't like Requiem for a Dream because the only reason why he bought the rights to it is so he could use that one bathroom shot in uh, Perfect Blue. But apparently Satoshi Kon doesn't even like Requiem for a Dream, so whatever um but apparent so anyway the point is so like you know there was not a lot of expectation behind the film and that's why like i could forgive a lot of like kind of some of the i mean the anime animation itself looks awesome um but like i could forgive some of like the out like some of the dated like animation but what i really wanted to talk about was uh sort of like the pop idol culture about the film because i feel like as foreigners as people who live outside of Japan, we're not very familiar with this term. And I looked it up, and apparently the idea of, like, a pop idol... I don't want to like, make this a big history lesson or anything like that, but the point is that, like, pop idols are essentially basically f- a work of fantasy. Like, basically you take these, like, young people, mostly girls, and you just basic And, like, these studios just, like, shape them into something specific where they're no you longer give a normal names, person. give them names, like Marilyn. Yeah, give them, like, a name, like Marilyn Monroe or something like that, yeah. And, like, basically make them this perfect image of, like... That, that dudes just jerk off to or whatever essentially because that's like one of the big criticisms against this type of culture where it's like these women whether they like it or not are being sexualized and so you know and when and because they're just they have to they realize that they're still human beings so like when they're not acting like they're quote-unquote pop idol figure fans just freak the fuck out to the point where like they assault these women they like you know try to like they they, they try to rape yeah, them essentially yeah. and i think when i learned about that it kind of enhanced a lot of the things that was happening in the film because it's like this is sort of like very much a condemnation on that culture where it's like like we've all mentioned like the rape scene like a multiple times like that is unfortunately a very dark and depressing reality because like what i've learned about this is that at a certain point you have to go to to grow out of this whole like pop idol thing because like apparently like you reach a certain point around like i don't know 25 30 or something like that that was like the general age range i saw where it's like at a certain point you can't keep doing this like you have to transition to like something else so like a lot of people do like voice acting or become actresses or something like that Uh, sorry something like that and i think that's what makes rumi's character so interesting because like this is a woman who never let go of that she never let go of her past she's still like clinging on to this idea of like being a pop idol because that like that's what's made her like big in the first place and like they don't focus so much attention on that like they they mention that like once they say like one line about how like rumi used to be like a pop idol or something and then like move on and i think that's great because that like just well not justifies that like explains a lot of her motivations and like you know whether or not she's because that's why she like starts crying like during that rape scene and that's why like she starts freaking the fuck out because like this distorted image because like in a way Rumi and Mimania the the stalker are very similar in that they have this very distorted fantastical image of what Mima should be and because this image is being ruined by her becoming an actress by taking these like risque jobs that even she doesn't like like the rape scene or like the the scene where like she takes photos of herself nude and stuff like that it's like it's distorting this perfect image of herself and they can't take that so like they resort to these very violent tendencies that I think are just excellently pulled off very very well and like and 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 you top that with this woman who essentially is just like this kind of pure innocent being who's just sort of forced to grow up who's just sort of like she's not unsure about herself because like even even if you take out all of like the horror elements even if you take out like oh there's a serial killer there's a stalker blah 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 blah. like the 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 blending between reality and fantasy is still completely like justifiable it still like fits for a movie like this because like you can interpret that as her 
being incredibly, incredibly unconfident about herself because, like, Cham, like, finds success as a duo instead of a trio and stuff like that, and, like, she's not sure, like, did I make the right choice? Like, am I doing the right thing for myself? And it's her kind of, like, and I think that's what makes the ending so powerful when she says, no, I'm real. Like, it's her, like, finally finding the confidence in herself to say, no, fuck you guys. Like, this is who I am. This is who I want to be, and I don't care what anyone else has to say. So, anyway, I was talking for a long time, so uh, anyone else can jump in, so... I honestly, like, I feel like what I said earlier about the movie, like, I feel like that's all I really have to say. I feel like I need to watch this yeah, movie, same. like, at least five more times in order <laughs> to fully wa- watch it again. get everything. But, that, yeah, that's the thing. I don't really want to put myself through that again, even though I like, even though I love the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh. How did you guys feel about the uh, use of color? Because I thought the use of red was, like, really interesting. Oh, yeah. Did you guys notice that? Yeah. Mm. Like, I thought that was, like, a very interesting way to symbolize things. The same way how, like, something like The Godfather used, like, orange to symbolize death and stuff like that. Like, they use red as, like, a similar way to, like, foreshadow and, like, you know, like, forebode things like that, you know? So. And then eventually, like... Like, when she sees this red-dressed version of herself, it's yeah. kind of like a... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that scene where, like, um, she essentially stabs this, this like, idealized version of herself. Um, and, like... And then, and then it cuts back, and then they're like, cut, we got the shot! And, like, <laughs> all the stuff of just the, the blended reality, like, it really... It really has like what you said earlier, like that Charlie Kaufman kind of vibe to it. Like the, yeah. like I like all the stuff when like the movie within the movie within the movie and stuff like that. There's a whole lot of, like, like it it's leads like you on to think one thing and then it's not, and it's it's really sur- it is mind bending. Like the film yeah. is like like yeah, True Satoshi Kon really knows how to. He knows it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like mm. there's that one scene where, where like. Um, like, like they kind of trick you into thinking like, oh, she's maybe this was all just in her head and she's just at like a therapy session right now. And there's two cops, uh, outside like interview or like interviewing oh, that was her. And she's awesome. like, yeah. And like, then she's when she like, says no, her I'm name, really when... a pop idol or yeah. no, I'm really an actress. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we're like, what the fuck was this all in her head? And then bam, it's like, oh, cut, we got it. And it's like, yeah, and then it shit, rewinds guys. the footage and like, it says what she actually said. It's like really yeah. mind fuck. It's like fucking with your head like that. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's confusing. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, I'm I sure don't I even like, I just ask really have the approach of like this is an, an internal reflection of how someone perceives themselves i think aj and like timmy went into that like the main the main takeaway i got from it was like how fame is like uh negative and how it like can turn you into this person that you're not but like like the the internal aspect of it as well is like really interesting um, mm-hmm. to think about like yeah. yeah, like the like this this movie is also kind of similar to Blonde and Spencer, <laughs> where it's like a woman in the limelight, and like she has like this public perception of how people view her. Um, but this obviously goes into like different aspects, like with the stalker and uh, everything like that. And and yeah. I think it makes an interesting commentary where it's like they don't like directly say this, they don't directly comment on this, but it's like. It's also, like, a ver- a theme about, like, how we tend to sexualize, like, women like this. Because, like, yeah. if, let's assume, like, the this same movie happened but with, like, a dude. Like, a man probably wouldn't have to go through such drastic image changes. Like, they wouldn't have to go through, like, a rape scene or, like, do, like, a Photoshop nude session or whatever. But, like, but unfortunately, like, women have to go through this sort of thing to make these drastic changes if they want to, yeah. like, change their career. And it doesn't directly comment on this, but it, like, it's a lot of implications where it's like, wow, like, when I think about it, it's like, this is kind of fucked up, you know? So. Yeah, truly. Yeah. AJ, sorry, you were going to say something? Um, no, I was I wasn't. I, I, what, what, um, sorry, um. I feel like Sorry, a lot. Lost you there for a second. No, that's fine. I I feel like a lot of a lot of the movie is just kind of like fogged in my memory. Like yeah. I I feel like 
because of like what blends this... together at a certain point. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's what, like, that's the point. Like, everything so is well. just sort of, like, exactly. blended together into, like, this half-reality, half-dream session, you know? So I- Exactly, and, and that's what I was going to say. Like, like, I feel like that was yeah. the intention of the movie, to just kind of put me in a completely new headspace than what I usually am in. And as someone yeah. who is, like, who who's kind of devoting his life to his, um internet internet success like it, this movie does really scare me <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it really it, it really does lately like, of course like I, I don't want to like um I, I i don't want to become like this completely different version of myself and i don't want to put myself to like uncomfortable situations and i i feel like perfect blue just as weird as this might sound like i i feel like it's a bit of a psa oh yeah it you could interpret it as that yeah mm-hmm. like, like in that regard yeah like um and it, it just i i, I want to give like specifics but like i said this movie is just kind of like distorted into my memory uh, I I I watched it like like I definitely watched it. I'll I'll provide proof. It, it it's just that like <laughs> it it it's just uh, there's so much that happens in such a short amount of time in this yeah. movie. There, there, there's almost too much to me. It kind of felt like Mahalan Drive. And Black Swan. I I know those two movies like came out after, but yeah, but you can see like a lot of influences from this. Yeah, I, I'll say this: yeah. the yeah, the same kind of despair that I felt during Mahalan Drive is this is exactly the same as I felt during Perfect Blue, and and um, Black Swan as well. Like gives me this sense of despair, but like now after watching Perfect Blue, I I do see Black Swan. I I love Black Swan, but I do see Black Swan as a, a little bit uh derivative of Perfect Blue. Yeah, that's why I yeah, never could yeah, like give it like a so. perfect score because it's like because I saw Black Swan after I saw Perfect Blue, and I was like, wow, this is just like this is just Perfect Blue. <laughs> yeah, but like. <laughs> I mean, it's still good, but, like, it's a derivative, you know, so... It's like how Inception is paprika. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a remake, in a way. It's like... Paprika it's the best live-action remake. I was gonna Black say, is this, is the best, this is the best... live-action remake. This is the best live-action anime adaptation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I personally like Black Swan Thanks, more than Darren this. Darren Aronofsky. You just gotta oh, really? do that for the Bible. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry if... Yeah, yeah Darren, Darren Aronofsky just either rips off Dar- uh, Satoshi Kone or rips off the Bible. It's like one of those things, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry if my, if my review isn't very Bible. good. Well... <laughs> No, no, it's fine. And, and I told because this is your first time seeing the film, so it's like you're kind of like absorbing a lot of this. Crap, I, I, so. I watched it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it for the first time yesterday because, like, I, I, I thought, like, morning, oh, okay, it, it'll, it'll give me a wake up and it'll give me, like, this very. Th- th- uh, I'll wake up fresh. Like, I'll wake up fresh <laughs> and I'll know exactly what to say. I have no idea what the fuck to say about this movie. <laughs> I have no idea well, done, what what the well. what to say about this like absolute like insanity piece this disaster piece yeah in, in a in That's a great fair. in a great Cause way it, yeah because the kinda, movie throws a lot at at you sorry Jules yeah say your thing yeah I was, I was gonna say I was kind of still asleep when I started watching it I wasn't fully <laughs> awake yet but then I was fully awake by that ending I yeah was oh yeah glued to <laughs> yep. thing. Mm-hmm. There, there were points. Uh, in... w- sorry, oh, go sorry, on. go ahead. I, I, I oh, was gonna uh, uh... go go ahead. Say your thing. thing. <laughs> I was gonna, I was just gonna say like during the beginning, I did admittedly doze off, but but then like, but then like once she announces that she's going into acting and like how everyone just kind of responds to her, like that that's when I slowly started getting into it, and then it just kind of got like more and more progressively insane as the movie went along 
and then like the, yeah, it, it hooks you. Yeah, yeah, and 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 then like the screwdriver stab scene, like that. That's what made me like fully awake. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's it's terrifying. It like, really is. You know, like we're 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 mentioning like the screwdriver scene a lot, and I think like that's like a perfect like because. Luca mentioned this before, like, the violence is used, like, sparingly, because if you really think about it, like, not a lot of, like, blood spatter is happening in the movie, but that's not really the point of the film either. It's, like, it's all about building tension, and when you build that tension for so yeah. long, like, it, it rewards you, I guess, if you're a sick deviant like me with the, those, like, violent moments and stuff like that. And I will forever, like, I made this joke in the group chat where it's, like, top 10 worst songs to play in an elevator, like, number 10, and then this, this and, that, and then the song, um, <laughs> that, um... That me mania plays uh, the angel of love song, you know, like that. I I don't know. Like to this day, I'll just like one of these days, I'll just randomly like go on an elevator, play that, blast that song on my iPhone, and just see what kind of reactions I get. I just want to see. You. <laughs> do it again. If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know. Yeah, <laughs> do it in Japan. Yeah. Um, I wanted to um point out one really th cool thing. I like. I was particularly paying attention to the opening because like the opening i feel like there's a lot to really d digress like the the first time we see this like sort of like transition to reality and fantasy is when like she's on the subway and she's listening to the song that she played at that concert and you can look at that as her saying like you know I, even though i'm making this transition to acting like i'm still nostalgic for that era i'm still like you know, I'm still grasping on to that thing that happened. And an interesting note about the crowd when that song is playing, when they're performing, is I noticed two things. One, I noticed that they were all men. And they weren't, like, little kids or anything. They were all, like, fully grown adult men. And I think that yeah. has something to say about, like, not just the... Oh, whoops, Jules went away. Um, Not just, like, the type of people who are, like, who are... Who are essentially consuming this product who are essentially listening to the people the type of people who are showing up to to chomp concerts to like these pop idol groups but the second thing i really found interesting even more so than the first time i saw it was like the use of cameras like the use of cameras is such an interesting way to look at the film because like the the first the when they're when chom is performing that concert you see dozens of dozens of cameras just like flashing and stuff like that but the use of cameras is like really really important because i look at that as sort of like the the the, the people who listen to chom who are fans of mima especially the male fans they they are looking at this in a very specific narrow surface level point of view they're use they're looking at through they're they're using their cameras to look at a very specific you know type of person that Mima should be but they're never appreciating the person that she actually is they're never like they never understand yeah. that like outside of this like glamorous like you know almost like sexualized like figure this is a real person who has real issues and like real wants and goals and desires and I think that's like a lot of people just like forgetting about that like when they look they when the when the nude guy like the the camera guy who got stabbed in the eyes a couple times after by the pizza guy like he he only use uses the camera to look at her in a very specific way she's like oh i love topless naked women and stuff like that and like and and me mania also uses cameras in a very specific way where it's like she he records that what's happening and then like because he only wants to look at um mima in a very specific way it's why he's like obsessed with mima chat uh sorry mima chat that that was it that was what it was called because that's a very specific way to look at mima instead of actually looking at her for what she is or like who she really is and i think that's yeah. really interesting i think that's awesome so yeah cool <laughs> is that what we have to say on the film <laughs> I, I mean i could say more but i'm just interested <laughs> to hear more of your thoughts yeah <laughs> i mean i think you've you said you said everything, everything I wanted dude. to say. And... <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I love the movie. I t I tend I to know, talk. It's, it's all good. No, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I think like like the there is many aspects of this film that feel exponentially ahead of its time. Like yeah, like um, especially with like the internet and stuff like that and fan culture. Um, mm -hmm. Like 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 yeah, creating the like fake websites about people and shit like that. Like 
that that stuff like happens like like this film really goes on to like like comments on a lot of like all the aspects that go into uh like i guess the film production and like the star of a film and their life surrounding that that film and like the people associated with them and their fans and stuff like that like it's it's a really great like um visionary like tale on like yeah (laughs) this is mimi this is like her life and what she experiences like in the realm of making a film where she's like exploited in ways um has to do all these awful like scenes in order to uh, gain up it like on the film set like one of the most shocking sequences is when the guy like uh, opens the the explosive mail and it's like yeah we'll just carry on filming like who gives a fuck and shit like that (laughs) like like it just shows like the harsh environment like like that goes into creating um uh movies at some points and how like some uh, productions can be super troubled and flawed and and it also shows the harsh environment on like um fans and like ec- obsessiveness like over um how people perceive you and stuff like that like yeah i i, I like i think that like like how that stalker dude like had this custom website and like was mimicking uh mimi uh is like Mima, it's like super relevant like <laughs> uh like yeah and it's yeah, mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I I really appreciated the actual like show itself because there are so many layers to the show because you can interpret it in three different ways. One, you can look at that as like a parody in the sense that like the show could have just been like this could in like a in a worse world where Satoshi Kon didn't make this film, the show could have just been exactly what this film was, like generic bullshit. Yeah. And the second way you can look at it is, like, what we've been talking about. It's, like, her real life and the show are so blended together that you have no clue what the fuck is going on. Like, you don't know if this is, like, a set or if this is, like, real life or something like that. And they toy with that very early on when, like, that one dude, I guess, was playing, like, like an agent or something. is like, yo, don't you want to be a model? And, like, a model. And, like, turns out that was a scene. Yeah. Yeah. but then, and this is my favorite way to look at this, the third way you can look at this, and this cemented this more than anything on a rewatch, was the show kind of foreshadows a lot that's happening. And I think it's very clever in terms of how it does that. Like, I wrote down this line that um, the screenwriter who gets killed, the first, like, victim who gets killed in the in the movie, um, the director asks, like, um, what are you going to do about uh, about the killer or, like, uh, the criminal yeah, or whatever? Yeah, there's a lot you of have great to, reincorporation. Yeah, you have to make up your mind soon. And I was like, what the fuck? Did that just, that's the ending. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so AJ Jules, yeah. did you have uh, anything else? I, I I've been talking a lot, and I want you guys. Uh, I want to hear more of your thoughts and stuff. So I, I have nothing else. Uh, I think they've said multiple times. I don't know what the fuck to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. letting you guys know, I gotta get going soon. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we can yeah, wrap we, this we, up soon. We've been reco- we, we're we're approaching the two hour mark. Yeah. Let's yeah. just wrap this up. Yeah. So I and I feel like we've said everything we wanted to say. So. Alrighty. Yeah. yeah I, so, I definitely. Like, I'm still like. Yeah. Good, oh, do you do not get a oh, rating? Ratings. Oh. Um, yeah. Nine. Nine out of ten for me. Yeah. Really liked it. I'm definitely mm-hmm. rewatch when I have the courage to. Giving it a ten, <laughs> yeah, but I'm never gonna too. watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Adrian, what was your rating? Ten. I said I'm giving it a ten, but I'm probably never gonna watch it again. Nice. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. All right. Question yeah. Okay. I give it a seven or an eight. I guess it depends how I'm feeling. But yeah, um, I guess this watch, I'll give it a seven. I, I know I kind of gushed about its important themes, but it just, as I said this earlier, but it just doesn't have that personal kick that really, that really bumps it up for me. Like, yeah, it's something I can definitely watch again, yeah. but... I'm not rushing back to it, you know, um, but yeah. it's still a great movie. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite movies ever, and I'm going to give it a one out of 10. <laughs> okay. <nine>. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Subverted your uh, expectations. Gotcha. 
Yeah. Did a real Ryan Damn, Johnson. Damn, got him. <laughs> yeah, I just pulled out knives out on your ass, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, we can get into questions now. Because we've been talking mm. so long, I'll, I'll, in, I'll ask only, like, two or three questions. So there, Give um, us the juiciest okay. ones. The juiciest ones. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, just leave in the comments. Ask us questions. Blah, blah, blah. That sort of thing. Um, okay. So, the first question. Uh, so, this comes from my friend Xander, who does my Timmy and Friends videos with me. Um, so, first question. Uh, seeing that you guys are talking about Perfect Blue, uh, does Perfect Blue being animated give it more license to explore sexual themes that movies that are shot in live action uh, do? So, essentially, you know, is it more... I guess like passable or excusable or interesting if something like Perfect Blue is animated if it was unless it was like live action or something like that like that's the question. Well, I mean, if you're turned on by a cartoon, yeah, then there's the context, kind of something so. wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, if you're turned on by a naked cartoon character, though, the, though, Rule Thirty Four is it Rule Thirty Four? I'm sweating bullets yeah. here. <laughs> Just calling me out here, AJ. Why are you talking about the Wait, is it, is it called Rule 34? Like, uh, rule 34? No, it's called. not. Yeah. Rule 34 well, is something else. <laughs> yeah, Rule 34 is something that has nothing to do with like being a... Ugh. Being a culture being anime animated. enthusiast. Yeah, like... Yeah. The yeah, thing that, so. Timmy, that Timmy's talking about is Tumblr. No, I'm talking about hentai, you uncultured... Yeah, like, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Got the implications, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I think I it, about my it depends how it's used, I guess. Like, I think it it's definitely more accessible and easier to convey themes like that, especially because it uh, you don't have to, like, worry about, um, I guess, making someone uncomfortable and then having something like Blonde where, like, you kind of are making... Uh, an, a version of what you're trying yeah. to express like a like an awful version of what you're trying to express um yeah because there's no and, like and you, real people in perfect blue it's like yeah. i don't know less icky about it like compared to like blonde where it's like real people are going through this sort of thing yeah you know? but, but yeah, then like, again it, it really depends how you approach it but i guess with animation you you can explore it more creatively and more like and have more interesting i don't know uh shots i guess or like i don't i don't know how to explain it but you can explore it on a visual level like perfect blue does that you wouldn't really be able to explore in anything else and you can do extremely fucked up uh gut-wrenching sequences like perfect blue that convey like awful um uh themes but are commenting on them well with people just having to voice act and no actors feeling uncomfortable and anything like that mm -hmm. um but yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know i think it's entirely just a case by case basis i guess because like yeah. i don't know you could look at something like black swan and have it be it's like that's like equally as like sexually like prov provocative i guess if you want to use that term I don't know. It's yeah. like it's entirely dependent on case by case basis, and I don't really care one way or another if it's an animated character or if it's like, um, uh, a, like a real life person going through like that to for the point of making a theme like that. I just like you know what just matters to me is that like is there a purpose behind it? Because it's like if it's gonna just gonna be like some bullshit like an Eli Roth movie where it's like <laughs> like Keanu Reeves is fucking two women or something like that. Like no, that's like <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, like it, you need to make a point to that and you can't just like show titties and stuff like that you know like when like i'm watching wolf like uh yeah like wolf of wall street when i'm when i'm watching like um i don't mean to sound like a disgusting weeb or anything but when i'm watching like an etchy harem anime you yeah. know like i don't <laughs> as, <you> do. <laughs> as i do yeah as i do um I would like mine. I mean, I don't watch a ton just in general. I used to oh, watch a ton w during my prepubescent years because uh, reasons. Um, but I would like mine for there to be a point. I would just like, like, when I think of like fan service and anime in general, I got it. I did not mean to go, go this Timmy way. When I'm thinking about the story, <laughs> when I'm thinking of fan service, I would like for it there to either be a point to it or just like not distract the, 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 the show or a film in any way. And just, like, a lot of animes, like, when they have fan service, they're just like, ha, huh, look, aren't there titties right here? Like, no, that's bullshit. So, yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to go full anime there. So. <laughs> I, I'm, right. like, not well-versed in anime at all. 
So sorry if I'm not contributing as much to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. Me I'm... and you're in the same boat, AJ. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I'm not a big I... anime person, really, either. But oh god, that... the question Favorite kind of spanned of animation that's, that's in my general. Of knowledge. So. Yeah, that, I'm glad all of you guys said that because that means I can limit my questions down by a ton. Because a lot of people were asking me anime questions, and I was like, I don't think anyone else besides me <laughs> likes anime. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, depends, but yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, anyway, okay. That, I think we answered that question quite well, unless anyone else had something else to say. Uh, nah. Hmm. <laughs> um anyway okay uh, next question um uh, so this question was kind of directed at me but i'm changing it a little bit to like a address to everyone so list some of your waifus Wait, who is or in everyone's cases uh, uh list some of your favorite uh crushes whether they be animated or live action so i have a ton of the a ton for this one but i'll let you guys go first I'm gonna <laughs> go on for gonna fucking his top 10 ranked <laughs> list <laughs> Top 10 waifus I want to marry. <laughs> Welcome to WatchTimmy.com. <laughs> Where I descend into de degeneracy. Yeah, do you guys have any childhood um, crushes? Yeah, do you guys, do we have a celebrity crush? Childhood cr well, I mean, like, current celebrity crushes, or does it have to be, like, childhood? Just in know, general, any, whatever. Any, any it time. can be childhood, it can be current, whatever, so. Uh, you guys go first. I could say there, There's a lot for me. <laughs> Yeah, Jules, if you want to go first, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Lady Toddington from Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious or are you fucking with us? <laughs> no, I'm not serious. Okay. I mean, like... Um, gonna... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is a... <laughs> difficult question for me how much uh, are we willing to admit even that is the question i mean i'm an, a very <laughs> open person i'll talk about whatever so it's just a okay, matter of how open you... you guys are yeah maybe you should start then you, you yeah know. let me let me think well i'm more curious to hear about you okay well if you guys want time to think yeah we yeah, need sure. time to think yeah okay uh well i have a i have two separate lists thing. i have i have non-anime ones and i have anime ones so which one you guys want to hear <laughs> on anime we heard <laughs> you give, give, us, give, give us five of each anime five goals. of each Limit yourself. Sorry, so which one? I didn't... You guys were all talking at the same time. Non-anime. Non-anime. Okay. Uh, anime? Uh, I have a ton of these, actually. You said non-anime. Um, non-anime. So, non oh, you said non-anime? Sorry, I, <laughs> yeah. I thought you said anime. Yes, yeah, so, okay. Uh, non-anime... Um, well, uh, the first couple that I can think of, uh, Raven and Starfire from Teen Titans. Um, I will refuse... <laughs> to decide on which i am both sides and i will not pick a side uh i'm switzerland as uh, bella said in twilight 3 um so um uh i really liked uh, the mom from uh from iron giant i think uh oh. she was a real cutie patootie um uh let's see it's midnight it's yeah midnight uh, right now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, just a lot of, like, early cartoons, um, that I saw that I had a real crush on. Like, I had a real crush on, um, Frankie from, uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Um, she was real <laughs> cute. Do you, do you guys even know what that is? Yeah, yes. I know. I know, I know I what you're exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh... I'm just a young Gen Z, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, young Gen Z. <laughs> um... I liked uh, Gwen from Ben 10. I guess that's uh, another one. <laughs> I thought you were about to say from uh. Total Drama Island. <laughs> no, I was not going to say Total Drama Island. If I had a crush Wait, on anyone on Total Gwen Drama from Island. Total Drama Island? Yeah, if I had a crush on anyone on Total Drama Island, it was Chris. Like, that dude is, like, fucking. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, that guy is hacking. Um, well, I guess I'm going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, oh no, Gwen, yeah. What's. I, I'm not really someone that, like, has. I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm like I need to know someone <laughs> to have like a, 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 an attraction to them. I'm demisexual, so yeah. And also, I have a partner, so this is kind of a weird <laughs> question. Um, but I do remember Gwen from Total Drama being someone that I thought like, oh, like Hell was yeah. like look looked looked like attractive. I guess <laughs> I was like mm -hmm. Gwen from Total Drama. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
I can't really does. think of anyone else, uh, to be honest. I'll try to remember, but I'm genuinely trying to think. I just, I just like, yeah, think no I've one. You guys are a bunch of prudes. Like, you guys seriously no, 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 don't no, like, have. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I had a. Child I was never crush. thinking about that as a child. Like, yeah, I, I just never. I still don't about think about like that, that to this day. <laughs> yeah. uh, AJ, did you come up with any? I, I have current crushes, non anime. Um. Sure. I, yeah. I, I I never I don't think I ever had like childhood celebrity crushes. I I guess like uh, I don't know. Like you said Frankie from Foster's. Uh, sure. Oh, you like Frankie from, I, I, from I, Foster's? Over? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why not? Uh, why actually, not? I I also liked uh, Sleep Sleeping Beauty. I like her. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. I don't fucking know. Uh, current celebrity crushes. Uh, I don't know, like Jenny Slate, Phoebe Bridgers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that's fair. Claro, Haley Lou Richardson, like uh, you know, Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul Rudd. Rudd. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he's a, he's an attractive guy. He's funny. Not really. <laughs> Out of all the people in Anchorman, when I think hot, I'm not thinking Paul Rudd. I'm thinking fucking Steve Carell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking but he got his clothes from the toilet store. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess so. Um, Sex Panther powers Where's activate. activate. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so you guys seem to have a lot of um, live action crushes, which weird, but okay, yeah. I don't, know, I don't think I ever had a crush on an animated league. Like, Part two. We're not degenerates like you, Timmy. Yeah, not even like I don't know, like, uh, uh, fuck. What's uh, um, you've never seen the Goofy movie, AJ? I, oh I'm yeah, sure. okay, fine, fine. I, I like, changed my answer like, like Roxanne from the Goofy movie. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> even though, even though she's a dog, like fucking. Uh, this, no, this, that has okay, nothing to this, do with this. This, yeah. this an like these answers are just gonna get me like canceled off of YouTube. Like can, can we erase? Can we erase like me saying that I like like Sleeping Beauty or whatever? Yeah, I was. I don't know. I <laughs> can, can we can we just like edit that out? No, that's not. That that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> don't worry about. It. As long as uh, uh, as Dennis Reynolds said in uh, It's Always Sunny. Just don't think about the implications or whatever the fuck he said. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, oh, um, and Lola Lola Bunny from Space Jam. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you degenerate piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks uh, for so much for Jessica free Rabbit speech. from from so free from who framed Roger Rabbit did you guys like that <laughs> no <laughs> I kind of liked Shaggy from Scooby Doo <laughs> I'm, I'm, wa one? I'm waiting for someone <laughs> to say the, the, the animated Scooby Doo, Scooby -Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you say the live action Shaggy for like the no, James Gunn? No, no, the yeah. animated. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, there, there's, there's my answer. Scooby -Doo. Sa Scooby -Doo Sarah Michelle Gellar from uh, Daphne. Sarah, Sarah. Michelle. Oh, I liked Linda Cardellini and as Velma more than I did uh, Daphne. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like trying yeah, to Velma, think of like I cartoons. Guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is a well not I have my a, kind of question <laughs> i have a bunch of anime ones if you guys are interested yeah in you could you can take the show um so um so i remember this very distinctly my first ever anime waifu crush um was uh uh faye valentine from cowboy bebop um that was one of the first anime series i saw and i was like i like this <laughs> and uh, oh, sorry, Luca. What were you saying? I can't hear you. Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you were saying something. Okay, <laughs> no. never. Mind. Um, okay. Um, and since then, I've just grown to like a lot of the uh, anime girls in anime. Uh, basically, all the girls in uh, To Loveru and To Loveru Darkness. Um, I liked the girls in most trigger animes, uh, like Kill a Kill and Darling and the Fran. Um, even if they're not great animes, I at least, uh, like some of the characters in that. Um, I like, uh, let's see. There was a long time where I was, like, I really, and this was more when I was a kid, uh, when I watched the Pokemon anime, like, 
Uh, I really liked all the the the, the girl companions that um, <laughs> that, uh, uh, <laughs> that that let, that let me just, how many ask. how many of these uh, characters are underage to me? Let me just uh, <laughs> all, <laughs> okay, the Pokemon question. one was when I was like twelve. Okay, we like, like, it. Leave me alone. I was twelve. A, it's that. just a number. <laughs> She's just a, <laughs> I sound like a, a fucking freak. Um, there are recent waifus um, in anime the shows that I've seen. <laughs> Um, I I don't know if you guys saw my um, uh, Call of the Night uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners uh, anime series uh, video, whatever. Yes, I do. Um, yeah, yeah, I I mentioned like three waifus that I really appreciate. Uh, Nazana <laughs> from uh, Call of the Night was um, I I like her I like her vibes. I like uh, I like what she's all about. Uh, I like Lucy from Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Um, she's probably my favorite. Um, female protagonist slash waifu in any trigger anime um i like uh, marin from uh my dress up darling uh i feel like i'm just rambling about shit and you guys just have no clue what the fuck i'm talking about <laughs> so yeah <laughs> kind of uh let's see if i, I can watch think of that a couple cyberpunk other. anime though uh, I, lots of people i really enjoyed it i think you guys should yeah, check it out I, yeah so i i i'm planning on watching it yeah, uh, I'll list like a couple more. Don't worry, I won't go on for fucking forever. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I like uh, fucking uh, I like Bulma and I like Android eighteen from Dragon Ball Z. I think they're um, wife material. You know what? I will say I don't care if you guys have never seen Dragon Ball Z. Um, I I respect Krillin so goddamn much as a character because he might not be the most powerful character in the show, but when he could just like when he just like wipes up this like badass deadly like android woman i was like dude krillin you you got my respect bro <laughs> um yeah anyway I, i'll i'll stop now because i feel like i'm distancing myself from our fans at the, further than ever so uh yeah <laughs> if you want to call them that yeah so um yeah friends whatever um uh, hopefully i haven't distanced you guys from me based on my degeneracy because i'm a pretty open guy i'll talk about whatever so i don't care it's fine <laughs> yes yeah. we have a whole bunch of different people on this call <laughs> yeah. yeah so anyway is that it do you guys have any a other degenerate you and wanna... a child in the same call what a <laughs> what a miracle yeah all right that's yeah, the, yeah that's it um i have like so one I'll, more I'll question my... but it's like low low key like do you guys like taco bell that's like my friend from my friend dax said do you guys like taco we bell? don't even have it in australia don't even <laughs> oh my have God. it in south africa <laughs> it's uh mm. it's all right <laughs> all right um i've my, still never had recommend... taco bell yeah anyway yeah J jules go ahead your recommendation my recommendation is a um this is another kind of like guilty pleasure movie for me kind of like oh god um, dead man's chest it's from <laughs> 1988. And it is a horror movie, right? It is a horror movie. Yeah, this movie. is a horror. Yeah. Okay. It's from okay. 1988, directed by Tom Holland, called Child's Play. Child's Play. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you said Tom Holland, I was like, oh, Yeah, no. I heard Tom Holland. I was like, I know exactly where this is going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah. Well, I've got a great. giant I, I... Chucky poster above me right now. I love really. These. Are you a big fan of the kidding. franchise? Or. I've only seen one and two in the remake. <laughs> nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I saw the first one a long time ago. I don't remember anything about it, so. Yeah. 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 Good, well, yeah. cheesy fun. Yeah. yeah so if you don't that's be, what I remember. Yeah, if you don't, don't want to be spoiled, spoiled for, for Child's, Child's Play 1988, directed by Tom Holland. Yeah, then watch, watch it. watch it before the next episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch it. We're going to be spoiling it and probably talk about other crap. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh AJ, thank you so much for coming on. We we really appreciate yep. you uh, being our first ever guest on uh, Far Off Films. Thanks so um, much for having me. Is there anything me. you want to plug? Or yeah, uh, I have a YouTube. Just look up my name. I have a letterbox. Just look up A Ford. I have a TikTok, which look up AJ Apple Juice. Um, <laughs> I have a Twitter, which is like A Ford seven seven eight seven or something like that. <laughs> uh, if you guys like, um, um, you guys like, uh, movies and music, you know, I'm your guy. 
All the good stuff. Cool. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, yeah, AJ, for coming on. And uh, yeah. This was a lot uh, of fun. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Uh, bye bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Synecdoche, Shrek. Synecdoche, yeah. Happy Shrek. All that stuff. Bye bye. Synecdoche to Shrek. Da, 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 da.